welcome to Knowles Field in Martinez, California tonight. It's the Alhambra Bulldogs hosting the Concord Miniman. Dan Wall and Steve Sanchez, as always, with Ron Carter and Matt Bollander in the truck. And tonight, Steve, a battle of two teams. Alhambra kind of finding their legs here, a young team, one and one on the season against Concord, a rebuilding team at 0-2. Well, yeah, Concord is a rebuilding team, and uh, they run the ring tee, and uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, runs. Uh, not a whole lot of balls going to be in the air tonight, Dan. Uh, Alhambra is led by um, the quarterback, uh, Zach Hall, and uh, he's a senior, and he throws the ball real well, and uh, uh, he's a good general out on the field, and uh, he does a real good job, but uh, you see a lot of running tonight. We're going to take a break here for two minutes, and we'll be back with all the action right after this. Tonight's AT&T Broadband Game of the Week is made possible in part by a generous donation from Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria in Walnut Creek. Located in the Encina Grande Shopping Center, Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria has classic Italian pastas and gourmet pizzas in a family atmosphere. Locally owned and operated by Rocco Bialy and family, Rocco's was voted the best pizza by readers of the Contra Costa Times. A great place to go to watch the AT&T Broadband Game of the Week. And Brendan Theaters Concord, featuring 14 screens of movie magic. All theaters have Lucasfilm THX digital sound systems, stadium style seating with high back comfortable love seat chairs, and an unobstructed view. Reserve your tickets over the phone and remember, movies always make a great gift. You can even find your favorite movie soundtrack in the lobby of the theater. And Paramount Technology of Concord. Located behind Tower Records in Concord, Paramount Technology has it all. Mobile computer service calls, in-house repair, and a friendly atmosphere. Your computer wizards with expert service and products for today and tomorrow's computer world. Thanks again to Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria of Walnut Creek, Brendan Theaters of Concord and Pittsburgh, and Paramount Technology of Concord for being part of our community and making tonight's production possible. Frankie, what are you doing underneath your car? What do you think I'm doing? I'm changing my oil and filter. Come on, let's go. The girls won't wait forever. As soon as I clean this mess up, we can go. Toss that oil and filter in the garbage. We gotta go. Are you crazy? I'm not stupid. If I dump this oil and filter in that garbage can, it will end up polluting the nearby landfill and later the bay. Toss it in the garbage over there, or in the storm drain. Boy, Chaz, you just don't get it. Whatever goes down the storm drains, goes directly to the river, delta, and the bay, and most importantly, to your precious surf beaches. You're kidding me, right? No, I'm not. Do the right thing. Take care of your used motor oil and filter and recycle it. Back at Knowles Field in Martinez, and tonight it's Alhambra and Concord on the AT&T Broadband High School Game of the Week. Dan Wall and Steve Sanchez and Ron Carter and Matt Bollinger in the truck, Steve. And tonight this is going to be an interesting game for us. Um, we have not seen either of these teams, uh, much like last week. But last week turned out to be a very, very interesting game between Las Lomas and College Park. Las Lomas winning that game in the last two minutes, 28-24. to and tonight we take a look at a team, Alhambra, led by Dave Silvera in his 20th year, who's had a lot of success here at this school with, the, with this Bulldog football team. He really has, Dan, and uh, he always puts a good product on the field, and they're always uh, well coached, and they're always ready to play. And a lot of people didn't give College Park a chance against Los Lomos, and they, they gave Los Lomos all they could handle, and uh, more than. So uh, Concord's here to play, and uh, we'll see what happens. I believe we're going to have a moment of silence for all the victims of uh, the unfortunate tragedies of uh, last week. So uh, here's a moment of silence with the cheerleaders uh, presenting the flag. Thank you. Please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. And now the national anthem.
Alhambra High School, and don't forget to wave and display that flag proudly, because that's the flag of freedom, Steve Sanchez. Well, Dan, I think uh, we take that national anthem a little bit more seriously nowadays when we hear it. I think everybody gets their attention just a little bit more. I think we should take it for granted. I don't think that's done no more. I think every no. time you hear it, people, you know, they really uh, get gets got everybody's attention, Dan. Absolutely. So we were talking about Alhambra. Alhambra's one and one. They lost to Palma. It's a very good team, 47-7. to seven. Happens to be Dave Silvera's alma mater. And then they beat Mount Diablo. And Mount Diablo has been struggling in re of recent years, Steve. So we really don't know a lot about Alhambra, and we'll have to see. But if he goes on, on their history, they've been a, a great team. They've won some North Coast section championships. They've been in some big games. And last year they went to the playoffs, were knocked off by Piedmont in the first round. Now Concord, on the other hand, you go back to the 80s, and remember Dave Barr, who played mm -hmm. quarterback at Cal. They had some good teams. Mm -hmm. They've fallen on hard times. And they brought in Rob Polis to, to coach out of Akalanis, the offensive coordinator there. And he brings in the wing tee and replaces George Smiley, who had a 12-year run as the coach of the Minutemen. Yeah, he really does. And this is uh, uh, his initial season. And uh, Jim Bogart uh, is a quarterback, Dan. He's a senior. He runs, he runs that wing tee. And you're going to see him on the ground a lot, the misdirection. And uh, they do all kinds of weird things off that formation. And I think they're going to try to confuse our hammer a little bit. And uh, we're going to find out about our hammer's speed on defense because uh, if you're going to play against that wing tee, you got to have speed to cover it. So it should be pretty interesting, Dan. Concord shouldn't be hard to, to uh, pick out tonight, Steve. They're the team in all green. And there they are right there. Uh, out here at Alhambra. Alhambra High School, kind of a weird setup at Knowles Field. They uh, they don't have bleachers on that side. There's a baseball field. I actually remember playing baseball in that field when and I And you told me you hit a home run there, did you? I, yeah, I hit one about to where we're, we're at right now. Wow, yeah, you got a hold of that it, one. It was crushed, <laughs> it really was. Uh, now, I think actually what happened is the left fielder and center fielder ran at each other on a bloop, and then I that, ran that, around. Well, that, which whatever. You probably in the paper, can't it looked believe like that, a 450 yard drive. You probably can't believe I actually ran around the bases that no. far without it going over the fence. Um, but that is what it's like over there. It's kind of weird. No stands and no support. All your fans are on this side of the field, of course, with all the Alhambra fans. So kind of interesting. So we're kind of waiting for things to get ready here. There seems to be a delay for some reason. I think at first they might have been waiting for the lights to come on. Now one of the uh, administrators from Alhambra is shaking his head as he looks at a couple of the coaches. And... Uh, from Concord. So we're going to, I think we're going to have a, a slight delay here, and that's par for the course because we've had slight delays on all of our games. Here's a look at our schedule for those of you that have uh, joined us, and thank you for watching the games here on AT&T Broadband, of course. Next week we'll be at Diablo Valley College for the first time, and Camp Alindo, and I talked to their head coach, Coach uh, Macy, today, and he's very psyched up about playing College Park. And then we get back to some exciting games, Deer Valley at Antioch on the other side of the hill, and De La Salle, Pittsburgh. And by the way, folks, for those of you that have asked for it, we are going to give it to you. We are going to tape the game tomorrow at Stockton, and there it is, De La Salle Modern Day. We're going to tape it tomorrow night. We're going to show it at 3 p.m. in the Central County, which is over on this side, Concord, Martinez, Walnut Creek, Orinda, Moraga, and everyone on the other side of the hill in East County will get that game at 4 p.m. Right before it will be a doubleheader, Steve, 
Team LaSalle modern day, and they conquered Alhambra. I don't know if people can take a double hitter of me and you, Dan, but uh, they're going to have to if they're going to want to watch some high school football, and that should be a lot of fun going to Stockton tomorrow and uh, watching those two powerhouses. But uh, I don't know what's going on here, Dan. I'll let you take over. Maybe you know what's happening. I, the only thing I can think of, Steve, is that I knew one of the referees, uh, someone told me that their, one of the refs was ill, and they were waiting for a ref, and that might be what it is because there's absolutely no way that we could – start this game with it with only three it's bad enough that you try to do it with four so uh, uh, I'm gonna wait to hear from uh, from the uppity up uh, that's what we're gonna do we say we're sending it to a break so we're gonna send it to a break okay. and we'll be back after this back at uh, Knowles Field in now uh, Martinez at Alhambra High School and it looks like the officials have arrived and we should be getting set for football here uh, rather soon. As I was given these names, Wes Asmussen, Steve Kamitz, Bill Brown, and Dave Seamus as our officiating crew tonight, and that's a veteran crew of, uh, of many people that we've seen out here in the past. So uh, kind of a strange uh, uh, feel right now, Steve. It's like everything was ready to go, and then it just kind of the balloon burst. And because... Uh, that kind of, uh, I can't hear me, Dan, but I uh, hope we're on. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, Dan, um, I'll, I'll, be, I'll keep talking because nothing shuts me up. <laughs> um, but I heard uh, the great Steve Kamitz is out there. Steve uh, Kamitz is out there. So that's good. And I still can't hear me. So I, I don't know. Something happened to the sound up here, Steve, and we're just going to have to work on it uh, during the course of the game because I agree with you. It was like it was fine, and then it just went into a, like a tunnel or something. Mm -hmm. So we'll just have to see what happens. A lot of times, though, when we say we can't hear ourselves, I then go listen to the game on Saturday night, and we sound fine. Yeah. So we'll just have to just keep talking, and if, if something goes wrong, I'll hit you. Okay. Okay, how's that? You'd like that. Uh, yes, I would. Okay, well, it looks like uh, number 25 for Alhambra, Mickey Lane, and number 66, the big center, John Concepcion, are going to represent Alhambra for the coin flip that we're going to have out here. As you, there you look at the home side of Knowles Field, the only side with bleachers. And there's a rich and uh, tradition here of a great football team, Steve. And they remodeled this school a couple of years ago, and they didn't remodel the football field, though. And there's the other side, Dan. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, it's a nice view for, for our future uh, baseball broadcast from Alhambra High School. See all them cars, Dan, heading down that direction? Yeah. I've been on that road before. You know that road goes you, don't you? Well, the Alhambra, yeah, it goes down to uh, Bertolas. County Jail. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for sharing. <laughs> oh, God, there goes our, our crowd now. They've all, they've all <laughs> left and went over to, they figure if we're going to have to deal with this guy, we might as well watch Cops. <laughs> Okay, I've been so on that show a couple I, times. I know you have. I've called you in. Uh, <laughs> 82, Jim Bogert, the quarterback, and 22, John Cabral, one of the defensive ends and also one of the uh, the backs. Now, you try to explain to the folks this wing tee. It, it's, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. No, it's really not. And uh, you, when they line up, you kind of go, what in the heck are they doing? You, you think they're, they're in a wrong formation or some set. But uh, Ignacio Valley has run it uh, the last few years. Let's see what he's got to say here, Dan. I don't know if he's wired up or not. We have the, the, the ref, so let's send it down on the field. This year to talk about sportsmanship. We want you guys to control your players, and we don't want to control it on the field. All right? Everybody understand that? If we're having any problem with yeah. the player, we'll get you off the field. Yeah. Who wants to, you're the visitors, who wants to make the call? You're going to call? Yep. Okay, this is a head and a tail. Call it in the air loud and clear so they can hear. Tails. He called what? Tails. Tails. It is a head. White, you won the toss. You want to defer to second half. White's won the toss and will defer. Okay, now it's your choice. You want the ball? Okay, which way you want to kick? Okay, you want to get with your backs over there? Okay, Green is going to kick. Receive down here. Okay, gentlemen, bring your teams out. We're ready to go. Good luck. That was res referee Wes Asmussen, who with the coin flip, and that's the second week in a row, Steve, that the team is deferred. Yeah, it really is, and uh, I like that wiring up the mic and hearing what he's got to say. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Is he going to be like last week's ref, where he was like, first down, throw him out, get over here, let's yeah. go. Kick Number him in 55, the <laughs> grabbed him by the head and threw him down, 15 yard on. Yeah, yeah, it was fun, though. <laughs> you can hear what they got to say, you know. So uh, our referees are here, and I think that is the crew out there because I know Bill Brown, I know Wes Asmus, and I know Steve Kamitz. So hopefully that's Dave Seamus, and we'll, uh, we're all together on, uh, on that now that we've uh, we got everything under control. And here we go. So here's Alhambra in the, wearing the white tonight, and which is kind of uh, 
shunning tradition of the home team in football usually wears the dark color, but the Bulldogs come out in white with the yellow pants and the Minutemen come out in green, Steve. Kind of look like the old Antioch Panthers of the 70s right there. Well, they kind of look like Cal. Well, there Let's you go. Let's hope they don't play like Cal. Yeah, please. I know Tom Homo lives on this side of the hill. We say thanks a lot, Dan. Sorry. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> yeah. I saw that play against BYU the end of the half. Forget it, okay? <laughs> Mickey Perry to kick, and this game's underway finally. That kick is taken by number 24, Jesse Scott. Scott has good yardage right up the middle of the field, out past the 30-yard line, and that's where the Concord Minutemen will take over. Let's take a look at the offensive starters for Concord, Steve. Jim Bogert, yes, he is number 82. Jesse Scott, Carlos Sandoval are the running backs. Anagisi and Rawls will actually play in that backfield, but line up wide, and John Cabral's the tight end. Here's the line, Archuleta, Carlos, Kennedy, Kelso, and Lung for the Concord Minutemen. First down the ball at the 34-yard line. We'll get take a look at the Alhambra defense after this first play. Now, Steve, as you, you see it, it's two tight ends, usually a wing. You see, and they are, it's like, it looks like they're in a huddle. They haven't mm -hmm. even broke the huddle here on first down. Here's a motion man. A fake and play action and Bogert. And see, Steve, they've, they've already thrown for more yards than they have in the whole season. That's right. <laughs> we were talking about they won't, we won't see the ball in the air. What do they do? They go, we'll show Dan mm -hmm. and Steve. <laughs> that was Sandoval for a, a minute men first down. Here's the defense for Alhambra. Joachim, Downey, Green, and Burleson. Linebackers are Parada, Davidson, and Costanza. And Ryan Aldridge, Dan Gibson, and Mickey Lane, and Alfredo Martinez make up the defensive secondary for the Alhambra Bulldogs. Our first look at Alhambra, I know I haven't seen Alhambra play probably in five or six years. I haven't either, Dan, it's been a while. Read a lot about them in the paper, though. Here's Concord on first down, the ball at the 44-yard line. And a pitch this time. The deep back, good pursuit, though, but he gets outside. That was on Aguisi, and he gets about five. So t let's take a, we already took a look at the Alhambra defense, Steve. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, Ron Carter still got the graphic up there. That's all right, Ron. <laughs> Ron's on to things tonight. We have to mention that Travis Gliotto, there's a name for you, Steve. He's not in the starting lineup tonight. Probably you had something to do with it. So I did. Because you can name, you can say Alfredo Martinez easier than Travis Gliotto. Is that, did you have something to do with that? Nope, okay. not a thing. I just thought I'd check. Light's starting to take effect out here. Here's. Second down, handoff. No, he's, it's a fake and a play action and a roll. And he's in trouble. Oh, and he fumbles. And now Hammer's going to recover. Who made that play, Steve? Number 57, Dan. It was number 57, Adam Burleson. He made a great play all the way, all the way across, forced the fumble, and made the recovery. Let's, let's watch the replay right here, Dan. Hope we get it. I hope they got it down in the booth. We're getting some sort of feedback. Here it is, the replay, Dan. Right here, he fakes it up the middle. And right there, they kind of bite a little bit. He gets to the outside, and right here, he's being pursued by number 32, who does a great job. Well, let's go back to live now. <laughs> Parada made the tackle, forced the fumble. Burleson recovered. Here's Hall on first down, and he throws a pass out in the flat to number four, Dwayne Rilly, and it's incomplete. Let's take a look at Alhambra's offense, Steve. Yeah, that's Alhambra's defense, Ron. <laughs> We're getting there, though. He's going to throw it on up. We'll, we'll probably have to wait till after this play, but we can tell you that Zach Hall, the starting quarterback, he's 6'4", 200, and he's a senior, and he has a very smooth delivery, Steve. I watched really him does. in warm-ups. Rainford is in there along with Burke on second down, handoff to the trailing back Burke, and Burke busts ahead for about eight yards. Now let's take a look at... And right there, Dan, they ran behind Matt Filter and Nick Davidson on the, uh, on the well, they went to the right side on Derek uh, Bracca and Jamie Webb on the right-hand side and picked up uh, uh, a nice chunk of change right there. So they like that right side so far early. Third and, and two here, early in the first quarter, no score. Hall rolling, Hall over the middle. Oh, he's got a wide open tight end. That's Matt Fielder, and it's incomplete. That would have been a first down. Might have been a touchdown. Might have been a touchdown. And, uh, he made the big mistake of putting it right in his hands or right in the numbers, Dan. Quickly, let's just take a look at their, because they might go for it here. So let's throw up the starters. Zach Hall, Sean Burke, Dwayne Riley, Mike Yamamoto, Dan Giffen, and that was Fielder, the tight end, and their offensive line with a couple of changes tonight due to injuries. I know that Marlar is out. We're not going to see it until after this play, but we'll get it to. Actually, Marlar is in. One of their other starters, Steve, Damron, is out with an injury. Here, they're going for it on fourth down. 
Yep. They jumped on the right-hand side, Dan. This is going to push him back five yards. All right, let's get the Alhambra offensive line quickly in. Concepcion, Braca, Marlar, Damron, and Webb were listed. But they had a couple of changes. There they are. You can see Davidson is in there, and Damron is out. So there was one change on the offensive line. They're going to go for it again, Dan. Fourth and seven, that uh, five-yard penalty didn't change uh, the coach's mind at all. He's still going to go. The ball at the 34, fourth down. Here's Hall to pass. Play action once again. And he's got an open receiver. That's Yamamoto. And I think it's just enough for a first down, so Alhambra's going to move the chains here, Steve. Yeah, he's going to pick it up, Dan. They, they needed about 12. They picked up about 14 on it, and uh, they're moving the chains to keep the drive going. Yamamoto made a nice catch, just uh, did a, 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 a little turn in, Dan. Maybe we, I don't know if we could, <laughs> I don't know if we could, well. I don't know what that was, Steve, but it wasn't the replay. No. Well, they'll get it down in the truck. Matt Bolander and uh, Ron Carter, they're, they're, they're down there playing dominoes right there. <laughs> you know, they play dominoes end to end produce at the same time. They're good. Brocka moved on the right side, and it's a procedure penalty. It's going to be first and 15. This will move them back to the 29-yard line. Now we, can we take a look at the Concord Minutemen defensive starters? Nope, they're still playing dominoes. That threw him back five, Dan. We got a first and 15. Let's see what Alhambra does on, uh, had a little movement on the other side. They Hand off to Burke. Oh, Burke gets about, barely past the line of scrimmage, and then he's just stuffed by number 34, Brandon Scholes. And Brian Franks, number 12, was in on the stop, too. He helped out a little bit, Dan. We'll take a look at those starters for Concord after this play. It's second and 13, ball at the 27-yard line. All to pass once again. I can see where this ball is going right now. It's to Burke, and for the second time here early, they've dropped a pass that would have resulted in the first down. Yeah, and uh, he's put it right in on the hands, and uh, he's thrown the ball really nice and put it right where he had to. Just a couple of drops have hurt this drive so far, Dan. Go ahead, Dan. And finally, Cabral, Carlos, Kelso, and that's the name for you, Steve. Krywakulski is a defensive tackle for Concord. Skulls, Franks, and Deitch are the linebackers. Krupa, Onagisi, Bogert, and Scott the defensive backfield for the Concord Minutemen. 9-11 to, to go here in the first quarter, tonight's game. Did we get, a, are the starters done now? We're done, we're playing Th football good. now. thank you. Cry Wachowski. <laughs> I knew that one would uh, shock you. Here's a third down and 13. Hall to pass once again. I like the way he stands. Oh, what a nice arm he has, Steve. Oh, really nice arm. He overshot the intended receiver, number 81, O'Shawn Head. One for five for 14 for Hall here in the first quarter. So 9.03 to go. And it's going to be fourth down. And I think they're going to try a field goal, Steve. Now, this is interesting because we've seen guys have no success at all from this range in high school football. No, the last time uh, we see somebody who kicked from this far was uh, Mr. Johnson from Antioch Panthers a couple years ago. He's down at Stanford. And uh, we've seen a lot of high school games. And uh, uh, it's going to be about a 39-yard attempt here, it looks like. It's Dennis. actually going to be a 44-yard attempt. And here's Perry. The kick is up, and I think it's going to be wide and no good. So Concord is held after the turnover, Steve. No score with 8.57 to go first quarter. And let's tell you about some of our great sponsors here on AT&T Broadband's High School Game of the Week. Of course, the New Mecca Cafe is always a great sponsor of high school sports here. Rock Bottom Records in Antioch, of course. Image is a three hair salon in Antioch. S&S Import Service in Antioch. Golf and Games in Antioch, Concord Beverage, Pantel's Music Box down on 4th Street in Antioch, a &B Creative Trophies on 6th Street in Antioch, Mercado's Hairstylist on Men for, on 2nd Street. Can you find someone who's not on, on, a, on a numbered street in Antioch? Santa? Action video. An action video. That's in Walnut Creek. First down, the pitch to 20, it looks like 21. It is 21, Dan. And that's nice because there's no number 21 on the roster. Maybe it's 24. <laughs> it is 24, and it's Jesse Scott. And Scott's knocked out of bounds after a gain of about four. And here goes our replay right here, Dan, and uh, we're not going to pick it up. I think we're getting some line play right here. 
And there's, there's Scott. He's being pursued. And uh, nice tackle right there. Number 20, Ryan Aldridge for the Bulldogs brings him down. And they actually marked it back just a touch. Again, a two. It's second and eight. Ball to 21 yard line. On a Gisi in motion, he gets the pitch, but he does not get a lot of yardage. And he's tackled by a host of dogs, Dan. No, it's a pack of dogs. Pack of dogs. Yeah, okay. Pack of dogs. You can't host dogs. You can't host dogs unless you're at a dog show. <laughs> for Christ's sake. Right sakes. here, Dan. Picks up three yards right here. He runs on the left hand side right there, and there's a pack of dogs. On. Martinez and Parada, the tacklers for the Bulldogs. It's third down so so far steve uh, it, it looks like last week well last week same kind of thing yep. two teams doing two different things and early they didn't do much of anything no just filling each other out and uh, this should be a pretty crazy one for it's all over with though third and five that's scott once again i'll tell you what someone just made a great play right there it was number 76 re, uh, it was joachim he took the quarterback bogart and basically just shoved him aside like a piece of I garbage get let's out of the way watch this let's see if we can't get this on the replay dan let's watch the quarterback here and here comes Bogart. He just kind of just shoves him into the pool. <laughs> what are you doing here? You're a quarterback. You can't be a pulley guard. And he does make the play. He slows everything up and lets the pursuit come in, Dan. And uh, a real good job right there. Good defense. Martinez once again over there on that tackle. So the first punt of the game for Concord. Martinez and number 20, Ryan Aldridge deep. And it looks like number 47, Cameron Deitch, is the punter. And it is Deitch. And here's the snap and the kick. And he goes to the far sideline, and it's out of bounds at about midfield. So I'll hammer in good field position, Steve, with 7.18 to go first quarter. And no score so far tonight from our very first time ever at Knowles Field here in Martinez. And it's a real nice crowd, and it's a nice night, Dan. One thing uh, we've been blessed with on these football games are the weathers have been uh. just beautiful. We've been so uh, so fortunate to have the great weather. And uh, look for uh, look for Zach Hall to put the ball in the air again. Uh, they could have had some success that first drive. They had a couple guys drop the ball on him, Dan. Well, he looks very comfortable back there. He stands, very, uh, yeah, he stands tall in the pocket, and uh, here comes a sweep here, and it looks like it's set up. Look at oh, who at number 64 leading Burke down the line there. That is, that's Marlar. He, he hit about five guys. Burke just kept pushing him out in front saying, hit him, hit him, and then hit him. Watch this. And, and let's watch Burke right here, Dan. Yeah, you're right on that guard. But Burke right here has got some speed right here. He gets to the outside, and right there he grabs number 64, says, here, take that guy out. And right here he just turns it on right there. There's some good speed from Sean Burke right there. Real nice. He's fast. Cabral made the tackle. First down, Alhambra, the ball at the 28-yard line. That's a gain of about 21 yards for Burke. Good shot of Hall there. Oh, a little misdirection play. That's 45, Rainford. And Rainford close to another Alhambra first down here as the clock runs with seven minutes to go. Steve, let's talk a little bit about the Alhambra coaching staff. Of course, of course, Dave Silvera here in his 20th year. Go ahead and tell who you want to tell us about. Well, Anthony Carlos made a real good tackle right there to stop it, Dan. Go ahead. Dan Cava, it's Cacavo uh -huh. and John Creasy. They only have three coaches. Mm -hmm. you know, Antioch has like 20 coaches. 23. <laughs> <laughs> we caught Vern Martin and Frank Mercado. Yeah. <laughs> There's Burke once again. Burke good yardage and a first down on a gain of about seven. Number 34 was in on that play, Brandon Scholes. So Alhambra moving the chains here in the first quarter, Steve. Our first look at the Bulldogs, of course. And their junior varsity won big in the, the opener here tonight. They were 6-4-1 last year, Steve. They play, of course, in the Diablo Foothill Athletic League, 2A, and they lost to Piedmont in the first round of the playoffs. We mentioned that earlier. So Alhambra hoping to uh, continue things here in uh, 2001. Yes. Pitch to number 20, Aldridge, and Aldridge might have a touchdown. Aldridge is in for the score. Touchdown, Alhambra, 15-yard TD run for Ryan Aldridge, and the Bulldogs dogs jump out on top, Steve, 6-0. Well, Dan, it seemed like that, you know, it was just a matter of time before Alhambra put a drive together. They were kind of they're controlling the front right now with Filder, Davidson, Malar, Concepcion, and Brock and Webb right now. They're starting to win the battle up front. And uh, Aldridge, he's got some speed, too. they got a couple guys back here who can flat out move on the outside. So uh, look for some big running yards from uh, the Hammer Bulldogs tonight, Dan. Well, 
Perry on for the extra point. It's good. And the score was 6-12 to go first quarter. Alhambra 7 and Concord nothing. And they're uh, milling around out there on the field as if there might have been a penalty. And there was. It was holding on Alhambra. We'll do it all over again. They're going to move Mickey uh, Perry back 10 or 15 yards, Dan, 15 yards, and say, let's see if he can do it again. So it's going to be a long extra point for him. We were talking about uh, Alhambra. Of course, uh, their JV coach, Emilio DeTulio. Say that five times fast, Dan. That sounds like a trouble player. Holding from, <laughs> from Tower of Power. Tower of Power. Repeat, yeah. kick. There's the Matter call fact, from our ref. My cousin Mimi Castillo's in Tower Power. Well, he is the trumpet player for Tower. Yeah. yeah that's Did you know Mimi? I know who he is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say it. It's Emilio Castillo. He's not really my cousin, but my cousin. You're just, such a liar. My cousin. <laughs> it's like this. My cousin is his sister-in-law. Big deal, huh? <laughs> His, uh, whatever. Hey, whatever. I, He's blonde, man. He's what a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> so Perry, oh, he kicks that into Concepcion. Steve, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that wouldn't even have got into a soccer net. No. Much less over the goalpost. So, unfortunately for a, you know, Steve, we mentioned that though last week. What happened to special teams in high school football? When we come to see him, I think we put the hex on him. I don't know ah. what it is. There you, you used to pretty much be able to kick an extra point, get a 40-yard punt off, and it's just it's widespread. There's just it's very difficult to find a guy that you can rely on to, to, to knock through that 30-yard field goal or even kick an extra point in some circumstances. Well, you know, talking to Coach Severa before the game a little bit, and uh, he's real comfortable with Perry. So uh, maybe that was a bad hold, Dan. Might maybe have been the a snap. Bad hold, bad maybe snap. the snap didn't get down, but he was telling me Perry's got a pretty good foot on him. Well, he looked like he was yeah. in uh, in, so, in warm-ups. Uh, we'll probably be able to see him before the day's up, uh, before this game's up. He'll probably be able to show off his leg. Well, don't, don't feel bad. As we were mentioning, it's widespread. It happens everywhere. Every time we show up to do a game out in Antioch or Deer Valley, you got a different kicker. Remember that one year, I think Antioch had four kickers in one game. One game. And three different putters. And then they found Chad Ebay. Chad Ebay. <laughs> of ebay.com, and he became a cult legend here on AT&T Broadband. Here's Perry to kick. Good nice kick. kick. Now, that's a good kick. There's a little bit of his leg and he was talking about. I don't think that uh, number 24, Scott, will be able to return that. So, Concord's going to take over at their 20-yard line. Their third possession, Steve. And, you know, even though they've, they had a couple first downs, they really have not been able to get anything at all going on the ground. No, they really haven't. And it uh, uh, should be interesting to see what they do now, Dan. And uh, uh, this is their third possession. They really haven't got much going. And uh, I think they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit tonight, Dan. Well, they did have that one nice pass, which tripled their passing output yeah. of the uh, 2001 season. They had four yards, and I think they had a 12-yard pass so far tonight. Here's the first down pitch. That's Krupa in the game, and Krupa gets hammered by Aldridge. And also number 53, Nick Davidson, in on uh, coming over from his defensive end position there, Steve. There's a shot of the Alhambra bench. That's Justin Turner there, who must be injured because he's not dressed here tonight. And a good shot of the Bulldogs. You guys are nothing but a bunch of dogs. Get him, Get him, second down, they're going to give that, uh, call that a gain of four. Second and six. They say second and five. I say second and six. I'm going to go with second and six. You know more than this guy next to us. <laughs> Play action. Bogert rolling, Bogert to throw. He's got a receiver deep. Oh, great play by Martinez to knock the ball away from Stephen Rawls, who was open for a minute, but that ball kind of floated, Steve. It could, this watch the replay right here. Dan is thrown up, and uh, Martinez goes up and hits it, and he almost bats it to 81, but now it wasn't as close as it looked live. But the real nice play by Martinez back in the secondary. We got a flag on the play, Dan. Martinez, of course, is uh, in tonight's game due to the injury to Gliato. And there's a penalty on the play, and that's in the neighborhood of some sort of line penalty like holding or clipping, Steve. We'll wait for the call. They have a clip on the offense. Repeat second down. So, oh. Steve, uh, a, a very uh, important uh, landmark probably coming up on this play because it's second in a long ways. We're going to call it second in the train depot, oh, right. the train overpass that goes <laughs> by uh, on the Highway 4 uh, interchange over there. Second and 20. 
519 to go first quarter. Here's a pitch. This is Krupa. Bogert out in front. I'll tell you what, I, this uh, number two, Ryan Aldridge. No, that wasn't Aldridge. I take that back. That was Martinez. But Aldridge and Martinez are causing all kinds of problems. Yeah, they really got a lot of speed on the corners, Dan, and uh, uh, they're really turning things upfield. They're not letting them get wide on them with the wing tee, and uh, that's causing all kinds of havoc because the pursuit's coming from the backside. And Martinez made that tackle, though, but Aldridge helped turn it in. But uh, even if they don't make the tackle, they got a bunch of dogs coming from the backside, turning that play in, pursuing. Now I'm going to go out on a limb because I did not have the pleasure of meeting all the coaches and say that that was defensive coordinator Dan Cacavo. I'm just going to go out on a limb, Steve. I bet you're right. Because there's only three. I, I got to be close on that. Here's a third down handoff. I'll tell you, Concord's not able to do anything against this Alhambra. No, they're really not. Defense at all. Burleson and Downey on the right side right there, Dan. 57 and 60 just uh, closed up that, uh, that big hole right there that... So uh, they're playing good defense right now, and uh, Concord's going backwards right now. Yeah, that was Franks. He only got maybe one. It's fourth and 19. The ball's on the 11-yard line, Steve, and Alhambra's going to come out of this with great field position once again. They already lead tonight, six to nothing. I think we need a timeout on defense if they want to talk it over. Well, you know what, Steve? There's only 10 Here's guys a clue. Up. Exactly. Anytime a team calls timeout when they have a punt, <laughs> yeah. They only had 10 guys. Right. There's absolutely no reason to call it any, either way else. We've got a, uh, an opportunity for uh, some of the folks out there in the community. If you'd like your business to join the AT&T Broadband Game of the Week, it's a great opportunity to increase viewer awareness of your business while supporting li local high school sports. Call 933-6264 and ask for Metal Matt. Matt Boland. <laughs> and he will be happy to take your checks. Make them out to Matt Boland. I like that commercial with him on the oil king. <laughs> We're still trying. Who's the oil can I think guy? it's Dave Jackson. The oil, Dave, Dave Jackson's Dave. the oil can man? Here's some of the, uh, the, uh, we'll the sights and sounds. We'll of show you, Dave, when you come on TV. Here. Yeah, I think the Dave oil Jackson is the oil can man. Dave Jackson coming back from a, a hiatus tonight to be the stat guy here at, uh, at Alhambra High School. Knowles Field, Steve. This is Knowles Field. Daryl Knowles used to pitch for the A's. Daryl Knowles. Oh, I'm sorry. I just took a shot. You only know two things in life. What is it? Sports and, and something else. Oh, that was almost blocked. Yes, and it, it was. could have been. It is. It's roughing. This is going to give Concord a first down, I believe, Steve. Because that was roughing the kicker. Number four. Our man really. Really. Yep. You're going to make a joke about that was really bad or that was really. No, I'm, I'm no. going to give it on. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, he really shouldn't be walking towards <laughs> Coach Severa right now. <laughs> and he turned around real quick. Really quick. So last week it was Steve Lynn again, and tonight it's Dwayne Riley, who's <laughs> going to become a cult hero here on AT&T Broadband. <laughs> Let's wait and see now. Of course, this is roughing the kicker. But high school, they have weird rules. I know in, in pro football, that's an automatic first down. Now, yeah. this might be fourth and four. So they oh, might well be on kicking the defense, in. Roughing the kicker, automatic oh. first down. Okay, there it's you an go, automatic Dan. first down. So. so Concord gets another opportunity, Steve, but they're still in pretty dire straits. I mean, they're still well down on their side of the field. Yeah, they really are. They need to sustain a drive, Dan, and uh, try to get the chains moving a little bit. Uh, they're only down a touchdown. They're not playing real well right now. Uh, they're losing the battle up front a little bit, and uh, uh, the Alhambra Bulldogs are dominating a little bit up front and pursuing, and so uh, uh, before this one's over, you might see them uh, throwing the ball a little bit, Dan. They might have to. Well, Coach Polis is out on the field for Concord. We talked a little bit about Hammer. Let's talk about Concord. Steve, Rob Polis in his first year. He's uh, assisted by Patrick Johnson, the defensive coordinator. Ron Krupa also uh, coaches over there. But Steve, once again, only three coaches. I think Los Lomas had four. And it's just, uh, I was looking, Steve, in preparation for tomorrow night's game. Modern Day's coaching staff takes up two pages. Oh, yeah. I think they have a coach for the left outside linebacker. Not for the linebacker. Just, just that one just guy? Just that one guy. And as a matter of fact, here's the graphic. As you say hi to, uh, I'm Dan, that's Steve, for those of you looking for him and who he owes money to. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we're going to tape De La Salle Modern Day out there at the University of Pacific. We're going to have it for you in the Central County. Sunday at 3, which is a really nice time to start. It should be right in the middle of the Rams game. The Rams <laughs> <laughs> the Ram Niner game. <laughs> and Metal Matt, of course, uh, is Did a big Rams fan. Did he just say go Rams? Well, he's a big Rams fan. Why don't he move to St. Louis then? 
Yeah, he was born in L.A. Oh, so was we'll, he? Okay. Yeah, okay, we'll give him that. We'll and then that, uh, that. out there, hopefully the 49ers will just be celebrating their go-ahead touchdown as it starts in the East County at 4 o'clock. First down, Bogart to pass. He has a receiver in the flat. That looks like Sandoval. It no, it was, it was Deitch, and it's incomplete. So, Steve, this has not been the uh, the most perfectly played game that we've seen here. And we've had a couple of real good passing games. Oh, we really have. Uh, um, our man, uh, Mr. Lewis at the Los Lomos, he really showed us some stuff last week, and uh, he threw the ball uh, uh, really well and ran very well. And uh, Joey Payton on opening night threw the ball well. And uh, but they're sticking with the wing tee, Dan. This is what well, they do. Well, that's, that's what they do. And this we is Onagisi. And Onagisi finally breaks through a hole. Gets about six. Number 19 for Alhambra, Dan Giffen with the tackle. So they're moving the ball, Steve. But there's still 3.30 to go here in the first quarter. Take a look at this, Steve. Okay, here it is, Dan. Here's that wing tee. Just a quick pitch right here to the back. And right there you got about the whole student body pulling left. And uh, he picks up about six yards, six or seven yards on the left-hand side. One of the better running plays from the wing T set we've seen so far tonight. And by the way, Steve, the Concord Minutemen are dead ringers almost for the Oregon Ducks with those uh, yeah. green and gold uniforms. This is Krupa. Krupa. I'll tell you what, Steve, what's killing them is guys like that guy right there, Mr. Martinez, who's a... Uh, shouldn't even be in the lineup, which really is scary, considering that there's a really? guy better than him. Yeah, he's is backing up. So you're coming in and cutting off this stuff before it, it really develops. And Watch he, right here. And, and here it is, Dan. Looks like Conker's blocking pretty good. And, and right there, Martinez gets head on by number 47, but he just plays off the block and just uh, manhandles this guy and throws him down. So it's fourth down. They got about three to go. And I think they're going to go on this side of the field, Dan. I don't know about this. I but, think they're uh, going to long count. Okay. Because this is in, with this kind of offense and all the weirdness that goes on around it, you might be able to get someone to jump right here. Well, Dan, I never said I was smarter than you. Well, they can't long count if they're going to send a guy in motion unless they're going to take the penalty. Oh, they decide. Now, that's an interesting play. And I don't, they just barely made it if they made it, Steve. Well, I'm looking at Steve Cam. It's across the field where he's marking it. And if his mark is right, they're going to move the chains, Dan. They just barely got that. It was an interesting call. See, I think they thought the same thing I did. You send a guy out there in yeah. motion, there's no way that guy, yeah, that's a good call. He did get back to about the 31-yard yeah. line. Alders missed him at the initial attack. If Alders would have wrapped him up, he would have uh, uh, maybe had him for a little bit of a loss, and he wouldn't have came up. But that was the first tackle we've seen Alders miss. He's a good player. and uh, But they picked the first down, so uh, the Minutemen keeps it alive. That's a gutsy call, Dan, on fourth down on that side of the field. Damron and Castanza in on the tackle. First down, the pitch and to Krupa, and it's on the ground. I'll tell you, that's the thing about this offense, Steve. You cannot make a mistake. You cannot be one step out no. of position. You cannot miss a count. You cannot not line up right because this is what happens. Okay, and here is the pitch right here. And let's watch number 75 break through Robert Green right here. 75 breaks through, goes, oh, good. I get a good shot right here. So Robert just kind of falls on them, but uh, they dropped the ball and uh, they put themselves in a hole. They didn't need that. Now they got about second and 15 to go, Dan. That was Krupa. That pitch was high, and Krupa bobbled it uh, as Bogert uh, was trying to uh, to get it to him there. Second and 15. The ball at the 33-yard line. This is Scott. Scott breaks back through. Scott has big yardage, but we have a penalty flag, Steve. And I tell you, this is the kind of stuff that kills you. They yeah. get a great run, and I, this is going to come back. Yeah. Yeah, he's pointing to the back, and uh, the quarterback's throwing up right now. He's sick. <laughs> I'll tell you, that but was yeah, the you, best play of the, of the game so far. Well, you know, it's real sad because you claw and you scratch, and you, you know, and it seems like you're a little bit uh, overmanned right now, and you break off the play of the day, and they got to bring it back, you know. So they got they just got to keep their heads up and keep at them, Dan. And uh, maybe they can get a couple more plays like that. That was a real nice play. Holding offense. Repeat second down. Now I like this guy. Yeah, well, he's kind of in between. He, he's, he's not real clean, but he's not last week, which was like uh, the warden. I think we got him from <laughs> uh, the Southeast Conference. No, I like him. He's, he's from Auburn or something, you know, somewhere down there in Georgia or something. That's Wes Asmussen, and he told me not to make any cracks about his name. And I think I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Has the announcer overhead said? Nowhere, Dan. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> let's just that? give him the yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah, nowhere. nowhere on that one. I like that. Well, I think that might be the last play of the first quarter. And come tell you, Steve, Concord 
right now has, you know, it's like third. It's like third in the Sun Valley Mall uh, on this next play. As uh, the clock's going to run out in the first quarter, end of one quarter of play here tonight from Alhambra High School. The Bulldogs six. The minute men nothing. We'll be back in one minute on AT&T broadband. Tonight's AT&T Broadband Game of the Week is made possible in part by a generous donation from Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria in Walnut Creek. Located in the Encina Grande Shopping Center, Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria has classic Italian pastas and gourmet pizzas in a family atmosphere. And Brendan Theaters Concord, featuring 14 screens of movie magic. All theaters have Lucasfilm THX digital sound systems, stadium-style seating with high-back comfortable love seat chairs. What you doing, Dad? I'm just getting rid of my old used motor oil. Dad! 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 What? Whoa! It's Mr. Fallout, the captain of clean water. What are you doing? Use your brain, not the storm drain. Recycle your used motor oil for a cleaner future. Call 1-800-NO-DUMPING or check out our website at www.funnelhead.com. My money is that oil can man is Dave Jackson. He's a funnel head. <laughs> There's the score after one quarter. Alhambra six, Concord nothing. Dan Wall, Steve Sanchez alongside our crack crew. And should I say, what is that? That's a minute man, is that, Dan. Is that Paul Revere? That's a minute man. He's standing up overlooking looking. Where's Dan Wall? He owes me money. <laughs> and I got a gun. <laughs> Our, I shouldn't say our crack crew, I should say our ace crew. And that's the Alhambra cheerleaders on the sideline. Now, Steve, they've turned the field around, so it's like it's third in the Benicia Bridge for a first down here right now. That's good, Dan. You've Thank come you. up with we some got good ones. that way. So here we go. Third and 24, ball to 23. Concord, that's Bogert, play action. A pass, and he throws an intended for Cabral. And I think it's incomplete, Steve. So we're going to have another punt from Concord. But you know, Concord's only down by one touchdown here, Steve. Yeah, they really are, Dan. And uh, you know, they, uh, uh, you kind of tell that, uh, you know, they're kind of uh, scratching and clawing and trying to hang in there. And uh, it seems like our hammer's a little bit quicker. They're a little bit faster on defense. And their offense is a lot crisper. And here we are, 6 nothing. So they got to feel pretty fortunate to where they're at. Well, they lost to Mount Eden 13-7 to and, and to Akalanis, uh, as Clay Callum would say. Uh-huh. 21 to 7. So they've only scored 14 points, but they've only given up 34 in two games. So they, they're, it's not like they're giving up a lot of points, uh -oh, but this, this could be a problem. Oh boy. This is Deitch with the ball. And Deitch is, he, at least he's getting some yardage back here, Steve. Oh my goodness, did he get hit. He just got leveled. The ball was on the 23 yard line to start that. Deitch fumbled the snap. Luckily for Concord, he didn't put his knee down or Alhambra would have had the ball inside the 10-yard line. And Let's here, look at this, Steve. He gets some good uh, yardage here, he, but watch you this. Know, right here, look, he runs into somebody here, and oh, yes. Guess who? Martinez. Yeah, I'm telling you, who is this guy? There's about seven teams that want to trade for him right now. He's like Lou Gehrig. That guy's not going to get his job. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gliotto, you <laughs> better be really good. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's like this guy, like there's like every team in the league is going, I want to trade. We'll trade you guys like a yeah. biology teacher for yeah. that Martinez, Martinez guy. Martinez kid. Man, so here's Alhambra at their at the Concord 30, 11:44 to go in the first half. Six nothing Bulldogs and Hall to pass, and he's going to try to go to number 19 Giffen, and he threw it behind him. The coverage on that play came from Cabral. And Steve, I think we finally settled into our pattern here tonight. As always, we always start. It's like chaos. It's jittery, and uh, we're always going crazy. And uh, right now, Dan, it's kind of getting a little cool up here in the booth, and it's kind of nice, and we're kind of settling into some football, and our hammer's on the move again. Well, Hall's only one of six for 14. All their offenses came from Burke, who is, uh, has 47 yards rushing on six carries so far here in the first half, Steve. Watch him wide right right now, Dan. Here's a handoff to Burke right up the gut, and Burke gets maybe four. Number 40 was in on that play, Sandoval, and also, uh, well, it looked like 56, but there is no 56, so it's probably. I'll tell you, Steve, always people don't realize high school football, not pro football, when it comes to the size of the numbers, and Concord, in an amazing, uh, it, their names are black. <laughs> Yeah, on the back of their uniform. <laughs> there is absolutely no, no way, way I'm going to read you their name. I'm going to have to know it up here because I'm not going to be able to tell it to you. So I don't think they knew they were going to be on TV this year, folks. We got Deer Valley to change our uniform, Steve. Yes, we did. Here's Hall to pass. One thing, Steve, this guy's never 
threatened in the pocket. Oh, he throws to Yamamoto in the end zone. It's just out of his reach, incomplete. He has a lot of time to pass. Yes, he game. really does, Dan, and uh, he set real tall the, in the pocket right there. I'm trying to get the number from the Concord side. I think it was the right end, and um, that had been Nick Davidson, I think it was. No, that's no hammer. Uh, yeah, you're looking. It's either Cabral or Carlos. One of them guys put a lot of pressure on him right there at the last minute and uh, forced that one a little bit. So uh, here we go, Dan. It's fourth down and about seven yards to go. Fourth and seven, the ball to 27. Now Hammer's going to go for it, 10.56 to go here. Here's Hall to pass once again. There's good coverage. Oh, but you know what? Giffen made that play, Steve. He yeah. really did. The coverage on that play was from Krupa, and Krupa was with him all the way, but Giffen knew that he was going to turn around and the ball was going to hit him right yeah. in the numbers. And they really, uh, they look, you could tell that them guys worked with each other a lot, and uh, that ball was in the air before he even made his move. A uh, little uh, stay move to Freddie Blitnikoff. Blitnikoff. Excuse you. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, they timed it really well, Dan, and uh, you're right. He made a real good catch on a nice move on the on the Remind me line. to tell you about the lunch I had yesterday, okay. Steve. It was, right. uh, it, was one, it was very nice. Ball to 16, first down, 10.28 to go. Hand off Burke. Burke up the middle. Nice Burke's going to cut outside here, and Burke, well, that was a nice tackle, though, a good open field tackle by number 12. Brian Franks, but Burke once again close to first down yardage. Yeah, he's really got some good. He's got some good speed. Let's watch it right here, Dan. And right here, Hall goes back, and uh, they run on the right hand side right here um, of Alhambra and uh, Brock and Webb, and he opens it up. And uh, a lot of speed by this kid. I really like him a lot. He runs with uh, authority. Uh, yeah, I'd have to say so far this year, Pate, the wide receivers, the Antioch, the quarterback from Monta Vista, J.C. Lewis, and Burke, along with Steve Lynn, some of the most impressive players we've seen. Burke again, hammering down close to a first down. As Alhambra starting to get their uh, offensive legs under him here, Steve. Yeah, they really are. They're starting to move the ball. They're winning the, the battle up front on the line, and uh, they're starting to push the Minutemen back, and there's 9.34 to go. And um, they need a big... Um, they got a measurement coming up right now, but uh, the Minutemen really need to stand tall right now and try to hold them maybe to three here, Dan, and not give them seven. Well, you know, Steve, uh, last week Alhambra beat Mount Diablo 46 to 21. They only gained 274 yards in that game, 177 on the ground. Burke had 115 of them, and Hall threw for about 100 yards in that game. So it kind of gives you an idea of uh, how they like to they like they the balance the offense, a little bit, mix yeah. it up, run a pro set, and they need. Steve, this is uh, this is third and very very short. as opposed to our usual very, very long. Well, the guy next to us said it's half a foot, so. <laughs> <laughs> Whose foot? I don't know. <laughs> <'Cause> it's <laughs> if it's Shaquille O'Neal's foot, right. it's about six yards. If it's Bob Lanier's foot. <laughs> They're marking it at right outside the five-yard line, third down. Now, last week, this meant a quarterback keeper on every yeah. play. I don't think, you know what, uh, that's, that's Burke. That's six. And They're never going to catch him. Burke can run out to Alhambra Boulevard down to Jack in the Box and order up a Happy Meal for yeah. all we know, Steve, on yeah. that play. He's got some speed. You know what, Hall, that's a touchdown for the Bulldogs, Steve. Now, let's watch it right here. 64 pulls right there for uh, Alhambra. Jacob Millar and, uh, opens it up, and then uh, the man just gets to the outside and runs it on in. You know, I don't think Hall's that kind of quarterback. You notice how Lynn, forget it, he wants the ball every right. day. And Lewis is kind of that way, too. Hall reminds me of kind of like Dan Marino. I ain't yeah. running. Here, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, that's, you're the running back. Yeah. You run. You're, you're I'm about not three, sneak. You're about, that. you're about three <laughs> times quicker than me. Here you go. I'll just watch you. I think Hall's just a classic old-style quarterback. He don't want nothing to do with any of that dirty work. He wants to just throw the ball and uh, go have a milkshake after they're, they're going for two, Dan. They need to. Here's Hall. Play action. Gets inside. He's going to run this time, though. Oh, but now second effort. there you go. He must have heard me. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, you don't think I like to run? I'm going to show you that I will. Mm -hmm. I still don't think he likes to run, though. No, I don't either. <laughs> I think that was just all that he could do there. But anyway, Burke, a five-yard run. Burke has two touchdowns tonight, Steve. And now Hall gets in on the, the point after, and it's 14 nothing. Let's watch this here, Dan. He gets to the outside right here. He just lowers the boom right there. He gets, he gets met by a couple of minute men, and... Um, he just powers his way in. I, uh, Dave Jackson points out Aldridge scored the first touchdown for Alhambra. And now Burke 
So it's 14 to nothing, Alhambra with 9.21 to go second quarter. Steve, and as we mentioned, next week we'll be at Diablo Valley College. And that's going to be exciting, but you know what? Tomorrow we'll be in Stockton. Tomorrow we're actually going to do a couple of games in some regulation-type stadiums, Steve. For the first time I can't ever. believe it. I know. It's hard to believe. I want to win the raffle over there. I heard it's about $20,000. At Stockton? Yeah. Oh, okay. And you I ain't like giving none of it back. You got to give some to me. I got you this gig. Okay. Okay. Here's Perry to kick. Concord trails by two touchdowns now, but they're still in this ball game with 9.21 to go. That's Scott. Scott takes it just outside the end zone, and then he falls at the 15-yard line. And in high school football, you can't get up, Steve. That's where you take the ball. I hate that rule. Let's take a look at next week's game once again. Here's a spiffy graphic that Matt Bolander has produced for us. You can see the Cougar inside the sea there. That's the Campolindo Cougars, coached by Ken Macy, against Bill Kepler's College Park Falcons. We had Coach Kepler on last week. Yes, we did. He's they a nice did a, guy. They did a real good job against Los Lamos. That, now, that'll be an interesting game because that be that's one of those games between a couple of teams. You know, this league has the higher upper echelon. Right. you got Miramani, Alhambra, Los Lomas, mm -hmm. and then you got College Park, and you Camp Alindo and, and Akalanis, and then obviously Concord, Mount Diablo, and uh, Northgate towards the bottom. So until someone breaks through to one of those other right, levels. Right. So that is a game. That's that, a very important that's game That's going to be an interesting teams. game. You're right. And it's going to be on a fast track. So that should be fun. And it's College Park's first home game. And then the week after that, we'll be at Antioch for Deer Valley Antioch, which will be a, a riot. Krupa with the pitch. And Krupa kind of picking his way through. Gets good yardage good that time. Yardage. I think, now, someone dove on the ground like there Looked was like a fumble. Looked like there was a ball loose, but I don't, I, don't think, I don't think he got hit from the back, Dan. I see 57 getting up out of that pile. Burleson again for Alhambra. Burleson's been playing very well so far early. Concord, as we mentioned, Steve lost to Akalanas 21-7 last week. They ran the ball for uh, only 120 yards. Franks had uh, 48 yards, Scott 35. And, of course, as we mentioned before tonight, they've actually s shown the capability of throwing the ball tonight, Steve. They've missed a couple, and they, they did get one big completion, mm -hmm. but they've only thrown the ball for about 20 yards this year. And here they're running again. This is on a Gisi. On a Gisi picking his way through. He gets a first down. That was a nice run. That's what you kind of have to do in this offense. Yeah, Steve. it really is, Dan. you got to kind of uh, – let's watch him on the left-hand side right Right here, uh, Dan, and uh, they run behind Klesko and Carlos, and uh, he picks it up, and uh, he picks up about seven to eight yards on the left side, moves the chains, and that's a pretty good run right there. That's one of their, uh, that looked like uh, they muscled it up a little bit and kind of uh, got tough with them. That's their second first down, first one by, by Dave Jackson giving us the, you know, Dave Jackson's the kind of guy that comes with those stats like it's their second first down and their first in the month of September on a Friday night with a full moon. <laughs> 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 Second first down for Concord. Uh, Lane made the tackle on that play. Here's Bogart to pass. Rolling. But you could run halfway to Bertola's for dinner. And he tries. That's the interesting thing about this, Steve, with a, with a kid like that. And you know the funny thing, there's people out there going, what's 82 doing with the ball? Yeah. 82's yeah, the that, quarterback. That, that, that just don't look right. Chris Palma had a, did a real good job in pursuit and uh, uh, followed him from the backside and kind of put some pressure on him. And uh, so we got about a second and about, what's it look like, Dan? Six or seven to go? Or? I'd say they gain, they're going to give them about four. It's going to be second and six. Yeah. But on that, the quarterback has to make that decision at what time the pursuit has opened the lane for him. And that's what he's waiting for there, Steve. He's waiting for that lane to open, and on that time he got about about four. Not a not a horrible play, but uh, it looked at one point like he could have got a lot more yardage. Here's a pitch to Scott. Scott is going to have first down yardage. I'll tell you, Concord looks impressive on this drive, Steve. They're finally moving the ball. Gain of about eight on that play, so it's going to be first down Concord. The ball at the 44-yard line. Real nice, real nice run on the right-hand side, Dan. Uh, they moved the change. Aldridge, I think, number 20, was in on it again, Dan. Uh, here's the pitch. Real nice pitch. 82 leads out. Let's see if 82 hits somebody. Well, he, he gets in the way, and uh, 24 gets nailed from the backside by number 55, Dan. Jared Costanza. Good job, Jared. First down, Concord. Second on this drive. 14-0 Alhambra. Now, that was the most... Obvious, simple, traditional play, Concord run tonight. Yeah, right. Uh, handed it up the middle. Went behind Sam Archuleta right up the middle and said, hey, Larry Kennedy and Anthony Carlos, let's see if we can't move them. And uh, Alhambra's defense of Green and Burleson said, you guys ain't going nowhere. That's just too easy. We could, we could read that one easy. That's easier than a book to read. Have you read any books lately, Steve? Yeah, I did. W what was the last book you read? Gone with the Wind. <laughs> that, 
<laughs> the last book you read was how to how to deliver a package in the rain. Anyway, here's Scott. <laughs> Dan, the last book I read was Left Behind, was what you're going to be <laughs> if you don't straighten up your act. <laughs> Did you really read Gone with the Wind? No, but I read Left Behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got to get back on track here. <laughs> you started it. Okay, I just thought I'd check. All right. The idea of you reading a book, though, just. It took me, me a off. month or so, oh. but I read it. I'm not talking about the front page. I'm I read about that whole book. book. It was a good okay. book. You should read it. All right, here Maybe we go. Maybe to change your life. Conquered finally in Alhambra territory, third down, third and three. This is Krupa with the pitch, and Krupa has another first down. And so you're right, Dan. Conker's impressive on this drive right now. And Aldridge is over there again. Aldridge and Martinez are just They're back very active. on defense. Let's watch the pitch right here, Dan. They run uh, around the right-hand side by Klesso and Carlos on the right-hand side, and... Uh, they're moving the chains. Well, Kles, uh, it's Kelso, not Is it Kles Kelso? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Ryan Klesko is a first baseman for the San Diego Padres. 27 yeah. homers, 95 <laughs> RBIs, I know. 5'9", five, five, 270, at Mr. Kelso weighs in at. So at 270, he is Mr. Conquered at the 43-yard line, first down. They're moving the ball here, 5.08 to go in the second quarter, and 14 to nothing Alhambra on the game of the week. Inside misdirection handoff. That's Onagisi, and this time Onagisi gets uh, nothing, maybe a loss here. Parada, the tackle, real nice play, fought him off all the way. And there you can see, Steve, we're not the lying, names. the names that you can barely see. I didn't think they had names on the back until you mentioned it. Minus one. That reminds me of an old story, Steve. These waters are good. We get it from Mickey Lowry? Mickey Lowry at Concord Beverage providing all the refreshments. Back in the old days, the Toronto Maple Leafs had an owner who hated the NHL, kind of like Al Davis hates right, the NFL. Right. And when they told him to start putting the names on the jerseys, he didn't want to, so he put, a, put white on white and blue on blue. You they were on there. You couldn't read them, but they were on there. He showed them. <laughs> Second down. Pitch to Krupa. Krupa's been uh, doing some damage yes, here. Yes, he has. That's a nice run. That gets back about five. A swarm, a pack of dogs, Steve. It's got to be a pack of dogs because we had a swarm of knights <laughs> last week. <laughs> and right here, here's the pitch, a host Dan. Of knights. Number 66. Watch this kick out block. Real nice. Oh, they just collapsed And that they whole collapsed on there. it. Mm -hmm. There's like a, okay, let's say who wasn't in on the tackle. Well, okay, I saw Martinez, was. I saw Aldridge, I saw Lane, I saw 57 Burleson. The same names we've been calling all yeah. night long were in on They're that. They're very active on defense. It's, this is a big play on this drive, Dan. They've been having a good drive. It's about third and six or seven. Let's see what they do. This is a big play for Concord. Scott in motion. Scott gets the pitch. I'll tell you one thing, though, too. He's not going to get a first down on that no. play, Steve, and they're probably going to go on fourth, but their quarterback is taking a pounding because he has to get out and block in front of every one of these plays. He really does, and uh, he's taking on linebackers and defensive ends and uh, guys who are a lot bigger and stronger than him. I shouldn't say stronger. I don't know how strong there the kid is. is. Uh, but uh, there's Bogert, one of four for ten yards, so nearly tripling their first two games passing output, Steve. Mm-hmm. And what about your lunch, Dan? Yeah, you told me to remind you about your lunch. Oh, I had lunch. Is here, tell us what you think of the game of the week. Uh, give us a call, 933-6264. I had lunch with Mario Salato, okay. one of my clients, Humble Brewery, but he played on the 1981 Raiders Super Bowl team. Is that right? He played with Matt Millen. He played with uh, uh, Jim Plunkett. He played with uh, Ted Hendricks, Art Shell, Gene Upshaw. Oh. So we had a very nice, uh, very nice time with Mr. Salato. Do you remember when all the Raiders used to go down to Jessica's in the Willows back in the late 70s and the early 80s? I remember when they used to go to a place over uh, in Oakland. I forget okay. the name of it, but a bar in Oakland. Big Al's, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. Stabler, uh, Stabler cl closed that place down. Many a night. Many nights. I bet he did. That's what I liked about it. Then he woke up like Sammy Ball and threw four <laughs> touchdowns the next night. He saw five receivers. He just happened to throw. Uh, you know, through, here you're taking a look at the Alhambra uh, defensive coordinator. That is Dan Cacavo. And Dan, he's a good-looking man. I'm sure he'd, he'd be impressed that you thought so, Steve. Well, what do you want to see? He's ugly. He wants to stab him. <laughs> now, that's a good-looking lady. <laughs> There's some of the fans here tonight. Nice little girl with her. Here we go, Steve. Fourth down. The pitch Mr. back. Misdirection back this the other is. way. It's there. Oh, but it got stuffed. It just got stuffed. As, just, just as Franks was going to get yeah. in for the first down, Steve. It got stuffed. 
on the far side over there. Burleson was over there. Aldridge was over there. Again, getting up. The lane was over there. Let's see let's, if we can see anyone let's else. Let's watch the replay here, Dan. It's like a misdirection. They come back to the right. They got everybody pulling student body right, right there. And uh, number 55 kind of started it all off. That's Dan. Costanza. Costanza did a real good job. Went at the ankles and kind of slowed it up. And uh, the rest of the pursuit came and caught up with them. And uh, here come the Bulldogs. So Concord, after a very nice drive, they had about 60 yards on that drive, Steve, but still not able to convert on that fourth down. And Alhambra takes over. Play action for Hall on first down. Hall scrambling. Hall looking for a receiver. He throws back to Yamamoto, and it's incomplete down low. The coverage by Anagisi for Concord, and it'll be second down. So Steve Sanchez, so far tonight here, we'll take a look at this again. Alhambra controlling the game. Concord starting to kind of figure things out with that offense. Yeah, they really are, Dan. Here's a replay right here. Here's Hall. Feels the pressure. Gets flushed out. Yamamoto's going to be open right here. He throws it a little bit low to him, and he, and he doesn't put that good of a throw on it, but he could have caught it, but just came up a little short on it. And I got to talk to Yamamoto before the game. He's a good kid. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, he's a real nice kid. I'm, and uh, Anyone I, who would talk to you, I'd have concern about. Why would that be? Not him, just talking oh, to talk you. Oh, talking to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with that. I, I, no, no problem with him. Here's Burke. He hasn't ran that much here uh, oh, he since he had all those yardage, and he slips after a gain of seven. So we'll credit the tackle to the lawn. This is a nice field out here, Steve. No, it really is. They got new grass here this year, and that's why they're protecting their, their baseball uh, field over there. And here's a pitch off to the right-hand side. 62 does a good job, and 45 makes a nice block on 24. And uh, right there, uh, the, the, you're right, the field makes a tackle. Burke, 10 carries, 73 yards so far for the Bulldogs. 2.26 to go here in the first half, 14 to nothing, Alhambra. Jesse now, Scott was in on that play, and uh, he goes both ways. Hand off to Burke. Burke breaks a tackle, gets a first down, breaks another tackle, gets outside, breaks another tackle. He's a good runner. He is. Out of bounds, finally. Knocked out of bounds all the way on the far sideline by Franks. And a first down for Alhambra, Steve. And I, I dare say it, but if they go in and score here, Concord's really going to have to pull a rabbit out of its hat to uh, get back in this one in the second half. There's Burke. You see he's got 73 yards on 10 carries. And here they are, Dan, going on the uh, left side behind Davidson and Fielder. Matt Fielder opening up a hole. He just destroys somebody. And uh, they turn up field, and uh, he breaks a tackle. And right here he slips another one. And just a real nice run on his part. He runs uh, with a full head of steam, Dan. First down, inside screen to Aldridge. Aldridge has some yardage, gets a block. I think they might have missed a clip downfield. And Aldridge, another first down inside the 30-yard line, the tackle by number 40, Sandoval. That was, I love that play. I love that inside screen, Steve. You Watch how that this is? sets up. This is De La Salle inside screen. De La Salle runs just like a, like a T right there. It's set up. They let the whole front line come through. Right there, there's Aldridge. Makes a nice play. There's a good shot of him. Turning up field. Makes a nice cut right there. Eludes a tackle there. And then uh, right there, number 40 comes from the side and uh, makes a tackle. And a real good job there by, uh, by Mr. Carlos Sandoval. I'll tell you, Steve, he went right by the big man, Krywakulski, in there, who goes 345, and the old is saying, I'm bigger than you, yes, but can you catch me? Here's Hall to pass. See, Steve, he just has way too much time. Uh, he throws to Giffen on the, the far sideline. There's also a penalty flag. But he, he, he hitched, fake, hitched fake three times and still no pressure. Yeah, and uh, I, think, I think you're going to get uh, Anthony Carlos for roughing, Dan, the, the passer. I think that's going to move the chains. It is a personal foul, roughing the passer, so Alhambra's going to stay on the move here. But they're just getting no pressure on him at all. No, you're absolutely right. Way too much time, and uh, with that much time, somebody's going to be open. You're just asking too much of your defensive backs to stay with somebody for three and four seconds. It's just too long. You know, Steve, I was looking over there, and I don't know why this weird thought came under my mind, but how do they play baseball with the road right there? And then I noticed they have this huge personal foul, series of screens over the there. Roughing the passer on the defense, automatic first down. There's the call from Wes. And I was saying, though, they have all these huge screens up there with the light. So what they do is they tie the football field in with the baseball field. That's yeah. how this kind of works. It's all one big, huge complex. But it also means they're one of the few teams that can play a night game in baseball. That's true. Oh, now Dave Jackson is telling me that the track used to run right through the football field. <laughs> okay. I don't know. What do they do for track now? That, that might be an interesting question. Oh, they've, they've, they've moved. They have a new track, so they have a different place for it. Here's first down, handoff Burke, and that almost looked like a face mask. Close to it. I don't know what you call a bunch of Minutemen, Steve. What do you call a bunch of Minutemen? 
as Onagisi was there, Sandoval was there, and also 34. Here's a replay on the right Skulls. side. Onagisi comes up. Uh, he gets hit once, and, on, and he finishes it off on Agisi, and uh, for the first time, Shio Hammer, negative yardage. A bunch of Minutemen. Let me think. What would a bunch, bunch of, of Minutemen? Minute a pack of dogs, a swarm of knights, and a host of Mustangs. That's right. A troop of Minutemen. Troop? I knew he was here for something. <laughs> <laughs> That's Brent. Brent, the computer guy. He came up with a troop of Minutemen. Let's see if we can't get a face mask here, Dan. There it is right there real quick. Let's look at the hand up by number 24 uh, on Concord. Uh, Jesse Scott looks like he reaches up and- uh, Yeah, he did. Of, yeah, he, he got a, they got away with one right there. Uh, uh, Dave Jackson says an hour of Minutemen. I like a troop. I, I think a troop. We're going with troop of Minutemen. You know, Dave Jackson, I think he was a Minuteman. That's how old Dave is. <laughs> Back there in <laughs> he'd 1776. Like a, he'd be like a seven decade man. Yeah. There's Dave sitting right there, right there. <laughs> yeah, that's Dave Jackson. He's, he's a minute man. He's the oil can man. Dave Jackson gets around, folks. <laughs> okay, Dan, here we go. Uh, we, we are playing football, right? One minute, 20 seconds to go here in the half. 14 nothing. We've had a lot of stoppages tonight, Steve. Yeah, we have. And he throws out in the flat to Burke, and that was one of Hull's worst plays of the, of the game so far. He's actually been on target most of the time, and that time the pass falls incomplete. It'll bring up third down, minute 18 to go. Steve, before we go, we, I think we neglected to mention New Mecca Cafe, Concord Beverage, Rock Bottom Records, Antioch Opticians, Pantels Music Box, s, &S Imports, a b Creative Trophy, Images of Three Hair Salon, Mercado's Barbershop, Golf and Games and Action Video here in the second quarter. Yes, but you did a real good job of it. And... Um I'm just glad to be here with you, Dan. Are, are you? Yeah. Oh, good. And tomorrow night we'll be in Stockton. Is, are, do you have any wants or warrants in Stockton? Uh, let's, let's get back to the game. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to know if I need to bring bail money. <laughs> here we go. Third and ten, the ball at the 15 from the shotgun. Oh, they, you know, they're setting up the screen as they let Cabral come in with a clean shot. And Hall then throws one out in the flat to Burke. And Burke is going to go in for the touchdown. What a great play. Oh, great play that by time. Burke. Hall to Burke. Hall knew all along that he had a safety uh, valve over there on the yeah. left side. Through to the sideline to Burke. Burke took over from there. 15 yards. Touchdown, Alhambra. And it's 20 to nothing, Steve. Dan, that was a hot potato touchdown right there. Hall had the ball, and uh, he like, was running around, and he noticed it was like a magnet. Are People you going to do a look? James Brown thing again? Ha! When we no, good God. No. <laughs> Watch this, though. Let's see if we can't get it on replay. Aldridge. Uh, after this After kick, kick, we'll take a look at it. I want you to get into some sort of James Brown. All right. Uh, you know, like, hot tub. Hoo! <laughs> Ton of people. <laughs> <laughs> Put my toe in the water. <laughs> Here's the kick. And this one, and they have a screen up too, but that time Mr. Perry kicked it out onto the uh, the entranceway into the high school. I told you they liked Money. his leg. That I, was a I, good looking extra I, point. I'm going to go with bad snap on that early one. Let's yep. take a look at it, Steve, and you can give some sort of crazy uh, gyration and, Here goes and the replay. explanation. Okay, right here, Holly's back in the pocket. They're trying to set up a screen right here, Dan. But number 22 comes through like gangbusters. That's all kinds of pressure on him. And right here, he's running, and he feels the heat. And watch him get rid of this thing. He said, God, God, get out of here. <laughs> and so he throws it over, and here comes a great run. This is Aldridge, Dan. Uh, is it? I thought it yes, was Burke. Yes, I think it's Aldridge. Number, no, it is no, Burke. Burke. You're right. Burke. And he dives in the end zone. There's and, Aldridge right there. Yeah, yeah. And six points by Burke, and... Uh, it's 21-0. I'll tell you. Alhambra, very, very impressive here in the first half. And Concord is, uh, look at Burke, has a 99 yards rushing. I hope they didn't include that last play as a rushing play, though, because they probably did. that was a pass play. We'll have to check with Dave Jackson. Here's the kick from Perry. And look at Perry. And he's man, his confidence. He's pumped up. Yeah. After that one kick. Yeah. And so Concord will take the ball at the 20, a minute five to go here, Steve. We talked about the great sponsor, Steve, and uh, around the league tonight on this, the second week of league play, College Park is at Miramani. College Park has lost two games in the last two minutes. They really have. They need to get a victory. Dublin is at Alcalanis. Los Lomas is at Camp Alindo. That's a big game. That's and a could good be game. an interesting game. And uh, Concord, of course, is out at Alhambra here. Mount Diablo is at Northgate over at Mount Diablo High School. Some other games in the area, of course, the big De La Salle game tomorrow against Modern Day. Deer Valley is hosting Montgomery of, out of Santa Rosa, and Antioch is playing down at California in Dublin, Steve. So some interesting intersectional games. Yeah, it really is before this league starts. And, uh, and the, the BVAL hasn't got started yet, but uh, number 55 in on that tackle, Dan. And that was Costanza tackling Krupa, and it's uh, inside a minute to play here. 
And uh, we're going to take, a, uh, of course, our break at halftime, be back with some halftime stats and the second half of play here tonight as uh, Coach Palace of, uh, or Polis. I, I knew I'd say Palace once. Yeah. I had written down Palace with a big X to it, you know, like those T-shirts they have? It's Polis. He was ill this week, Steve. He actually uh, talked to me from his sick bed on Wednesday. Really? Yeah, he had some kind of uh, bronchial infection or something. And, uh, um, well, I'm so glad to see he's okay. Yeah, he's up he's, and at him. He's better today. He probably ain't feeling too well right now. No, <laughs> not, not as well as he <laughs> no, probably would like. You know, he'd probably feel a little bit better Wednesday in bed than what he's feeling right now. 25 seconds to go here, and it's 21 to nothing, Alhambra. Dead ball, false start on the offense, second down. And a legal procedure there as uh, this should be the last play of the, of the first half as the clock is running now after that penalty spot. It'll be second and 15. And Concord's going to have to uh, rush just to get this play off, Steve. And uh, I don't know what you would call in this situation anyway. I think they're going to get one more play in. That did a little pitch. They stick with the wing tee. They're not going away from what they do. Scott with the pitch. Scott cuts back up against the grain, and he gets it back to the line of scrimmage, maybe six, but that's the last play of the first half. The score at halftime, Alhambra 21, conquered nothing, Steve Sanchez, and this game has been all about Zach Hall and Sean Burke. Yeah, it really has, and uh, uh, conquered last time they got the ball, they, uh, uh, they moved the ball really well. It looked like they were getting confidence under their feet, and they came up a little bit short on their drive, and Alhambra's just really been clicking on all cylinders most of the night. They've had a couple of drop passes on their first possession, kind of set them back a little bit, and then they got stalled on another possession, but besides that, their three of their last four possessions, they just marched up and down the field, and they look real comfortable, so uh, Alhambra's having their way right now, and uh, the Minutemen have got to regroup and see if they can't come up with an answer. Well, Alhambra's won 10 of the last 11 meetings between these teams. They are 10-3 and three over the last 13, and they're well on their way to another victory. Concord will have to regroup and hopefully get their act together in the second half. Alhambra leads 21 to nothing tonight on the AT&T Broadband Game of the Week. We'll be back after the halftime activities. Tonight's AT&T Broadband Game of the Week is made possible in part by a generous donation from Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria in Walnut Creek. Located in the Encina Grande Shopping Center, Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria has classic Italian pastas and gourmet pizzas in a family atmosphere. Locally owned and operated by Rocco Bialy and family, Rocco's was voted the best pizza by readers of the Contra Costa Times. A great place to go to watch the AT&T Broadband Game of the Week. And Brendan Theaters Concord, featuring 14 screens of movie magic. All theaters have Lucasfilm THX digital sound systems, stadium-style seating with high-back, comfortable loveseat chairs, and an unobstructed view. Reserve your tickets over the phone, and remember, movies always make a great gift. You can even find your favorite movie soundtrack in the lobby of the theater. And Paramount Technology of Concord. Located behind Tower Records in Concord, Paramount Technology has it all mobile computer service calls, in-house repair, and a friendly atmosphere. Your computer wizards with expert service and products for today and tomorrow's computer world. Thanks again to Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria of Walnut Creek, Brendan Theaters of Concord and Pittsburgh, and Paramount Technology of Concord for being part of our community and making tonight's production possible. in the garbage can will pollute our landfills and our environment. I've got a better plan for the future of Mr. Filter. After changing your oil and filter, place the filter in a sealed plastic bag. Make sure it doesn't leak and take it to a certified used oil and filter collection center. They will then properly dispose of Mr. Filter in an environmentally friendly way. Hey, wait a second. Don't close that door. Don't close it. Whoa! Whoa! Recycle your used oil filters for a cleaner future. For more information, call 1-800-NO-DUMPING or check out my website at www.funnelhead.com. Back at Alhambra High School, Knowles Field. The score at halftime, Alhambra 21 and Concord nothing. Dan Wall with Steve Sanchez here at halftime. Steve, three touchdowns for Alhambra, one from Aldridge, two from Burke. But the big stats that stand out in this game... 
Hallstone for 62 yards for Alhambra. Burke has rushed for 83, and they've really dominated on the offensive side of the ball. They really have, Dan, and uh, they've controlled the tempo, and uh, Hall's done what he's had to do to move the team, and uh, uh, Burke has really shown a lot as a running back, and uh, they're a real good offensive club. There's us on the camera. Wave to all the nice fans out there, AT&T Broadband. We'll be back in two minutes here on AT&T Broadband's High School Game of the Week. Tonight's AT&T Broadband Game of the Week is made possible in part by a generous donation from Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria in Walnut Creek. Located in the Encina Grande Shopping Center, Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria has classic Italian pastas and gourmet pizzas in a family atmosphere. Locally owned and operated by Rocco Bialy and family, Rocco's was voted the best pizza by readers of the Contra Costa Times. A great place to go to watch the AT&T Broadband Game of the Week. And Brendan Theaters Concord, featuring 14 screens of movie magic. All theaters have Lucasfilm THX digital sound systems, stadium-style seating with high-back, comfortable loveseat chairs, and an unobstructed view. Reserve your tickets over the phone, and remember, movies always make a great gift. You can even find your favorite movie soundtrack in the lobby of the theater. And Paramount Technology of Concord. Located behind Tower Records in Concord, Paramount Technology has it all. Mobile computer service calls, in-house repair, and a friendly atmosphere. Your computer wizards with expert service and products for today and tomorrow's computer world. Thanks again to Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria of Walnut Creek, Brendan Theaters of Concord and Pittsburgh, and Paramount Technology of Concord for being part of our community and making tonight's production possible. Frankie, what are you doing underneath your car? What do you think I'm doing? I'm changing my oil and filter. Come on, let's go. The girls won't wait forever. As soon as I clean this mess up, we can go. Toss that oil and filter in the garbage. We gotta go. Are you crazy? I'm not stupid. If I dump this oil and filter in that garbage can, it will end up polluting the nearby landfill and later the bay. Toss it in the garbage over there or in the storm drain. Boy, Chaz, you just don't get it. Whatever goes down the storm drains goes directly to the river, delta, and the bay, and most importantly, to your precious surf beaches. You're kidding me, right? No, I'm not. Do the right thing. Take care of your used motor oil and filter and recycle it. Let's take a quick check of the halftime stats. Alhambra, of course, uh, with the yardage. Uh, Advantage over Concord, 213 to 124. They ran for 106 yards behind Burke's 83, passed for 62, and there were 45 penalty yards involved in that, Steve, as you can see uh, some of the first-time statistics, for, uh, first half uh, statistics, excuse me, and we, uh, for Concord, 124 total yards, 81 rushing, which if you look at them in the, from the past, you, that would be a, a stat you would expect for yeah, them to exactly. have. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Aldridge, a 15-yard run, Burke a 6-yard run, and then Burke a 16-yard pass from Hall. The scoring in the first half for Alhambra, it was all Alhambra in the first half. And what did Coach Dave Silvera tell his Bulldogs at halftime, Steve? Well, he just told them, uh, let's just uh, keep up the uh, momentum and uh, keep up the, uh, uh, the offense and uh, uh, just keep uh, performing the way we are. Things should fall our way on defense. we got to wrap on the uh, uh, and uh, wrap them and tackle them at the line of scrimmage. We've been, they've been breaking a few tackles, and he's probably telling them uh, no arm tackles. Let's uh, get our shoulders in there and bring them down. And uh, on the other side of the ball, he's probably saying help. And there's Coach Silvera with the headset, and that's uh, there he is right there in the middle of your picture. And, of course, uh, Coach Cacavo and Creasy in there, and also probably uh, the JV coach DeTulio's in there because they only have – three varsity coaches, Stephen. In this day and age, that's just incredible. It when really you look is. at some of the coaching staffs in and around this area. I know out where we're, we're from, out in Deer Valley and uh, Antioch, they have anywhere between eight and ten guys on their coaching staff. They really staff. do, and uh, it's amazing the job that they do, these guys, too, uh, on both sides of uh, uh, of the field here. You know, they're limited with uh, with their coaches, and uh, there's, there's Zach, Zach Hall. Hall. He had a good half, and um, a few drop passes hurt his stats a little bit, but I'm sure he's going to keep airing it out. But uh, they do a good job on both sides of the field here, Dan. Krupa will kick, and it's the first time we've seen the kickoff team. And they, they're loaded up like they're going to – it would look like they would be uh, kicking an onside kick to the right side of the field here, Steve. But uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see Aldridge is back deep for Alhambra as we get ready to go here in the second half, reminding you once again next week. And now they're going to overshift. It's 
Campolindo for the first time on AT&T Broadband against College Park. And here's the kick to start the second half. A line drive comes down to Aldridge, and luckily he got his knee off the ground when he caught it, and he comes up the middle. And he's tackled by Franks at about the 24, excuse me, 29-yard line. And here comes Alhambra for the first time in the second half. So Burke had a big game on offense for Alhambra and Hall as well. And they're going to have to put some pressure on Hall, or he's going to just keep picking them apart. Yeah, he really is. And uh, um, they, they need to maybe start... Uh, Blitzing from the blind side, mixing it up a little bit on defense, gambling a little bit. You got nothing to lose. You might have to roll the dice a little bit defensively for the Minutemen. Maybe you can get a turnover and uh, create some, uh, put some life into your offense. Here's Burke around the left side. And that's how you see, Steve, they are getting in there. They're just not tackling at the point of contact. That was number 34, it looked like, uh, Scholes. And, and here's the handoff to Burke on in the... Uh, Number 34 right there just misses a tackle, and Burke picks up about an additional uh, uh, four or five yards on that. Uh, he, only, he only gained about four on it, but he was hit at the about for about a one-yard gain, but he broke through at the end, so uh, here comes our hammer. Franks and Deitch on the tackle. We're moving right along here tonight, too, Steve. It's only 8.30. 8.30 last week, I think we were in the second quarter. Mm -hmm. All the pass on second down. And he, you know, he just has all night as he hits Yamamoto for a first down. But he just waits for his guys to make the cut, turn, and the ball is usually in the air. There's really? no pressure at all. Yeah, and uh, he really delivered that real well. And right here, he's got about a five or six step drop. Did and he, he stand tall in the pocket? He stands tall in the pocket right here. Dan Yamamoto right here <laughs> says, yes, I'm going to move the chains. <laughs> That's your, my dad always says that. He goes, that's Steve Sanchez. He sure likes quarterbacks who stand tall in the pocket. <laughs> that's really. Oh, and that's Dwayne Really breaking through. First down yardage into Concord territory at the 34-yard line. Tackle from Bogart, the quarterback, playing safety on that play. Onagisi was there as well. Real nice play here, Dan, and they do a little misdirection. Number 74 just buries his man. Damn run. Uh, Damron just uh, buries his man, and here's really, really going far. <laughs> really? Really. <laughs> See, right there. there. <laughs> he's going to be. He's going to get destroyed at school <laughs> on Monday. Oh man. That's his first carry of the night, Steve. Too, and that was a big one. Play action, haul to pass, waiting for Giffen to make his cut. I'm telling you, Steve. This guy is just picking this team apart. Yeah, he really is. He's just got too, way too much time, and uh, he didn't even have to stand tall in the pocket there, Dan. He just took, took let's, watch, let's watch it right here, Dan. He just fakes it up the middle to Burke, and you got to respect that because he's been running. And right here, he's writing a book. He gets done with the book and just throws it over the middle and moves the chains again. So you're right. He's got all day he's to just, pass. He's just watching his guys go down, make their cut, and he can, and then he can make that decision if, mm -hmm. if the if the corner or the safety, whoever's watching his receivers, usually a corner, is, is has any sort of position on his man. And if they've got that three or four yard cushion, he's throwing it right to him. Beautiful play. It's second and very short, and Burke has a first down for Alhambra, moving the chains at the 22 yard line. That carry for really was a 24 yard gain. So that was a really nice play. Jesse Scott in on the tackle. Let's watch it here, Dan. They go right up the middle. And uh, Scott right there blocks it up. He picks up a couple. Sandoval as well. Yeah, and then uh, for the first down. And uh, they did a real good job right there. They ran behind Concepcion and uh, Braca on that time, the right-hand side. Jamie Webb, too. So they're mixing it up a little bit, kind of run pass, you know. <laughs> Alhambra and Los Lomas would be an interesting game. That would be a good too. game. I really like Lewis from Los Lomas. Yeah, he's, he's a, a great quarterback. First and ten. Burke the pitch. Burke still on his feet. Hits a man. Spins. That was Deitch who hit him. And then he spins and falls down inside the 20. So nine minutes to go here. Now Hambrun control of tonight's game. 21 to nothing. Here's a replay. And you know, Dan, not only is Burke quick, but it seems like the initial guy who always comes to get him never brings him down on the first time. Here he is right here. And he just man. spins away from him. And uh, we've seen that many a times tonight. Uh, he's quick, and uh, also he must be a little strong. He because, tackled himself on that yeah. play again. So uh, the uh, Alhambra line, back. yeah, the Alhambra line doing a great job tonight, protecting the quarterback, opening holes for Burke. Look at that, 111 yards for Burke, second consecutive game over 100. Here's Hall. Hall waits for Yamamoto. Uh, see what I mean, Steve? He has so much time that he could wait for Yamamoto. Onagisi committed to the deep. Uh, drop there, and then Yamamoto cut in front of him and was wide open, but he slipped he down. He slipped and fell, yeah. It's going to be third and five. How good's Palma? Beat Alhambra 47-7. to seven. They got to be good. 
Now that's Dave Severa's alma mater, right? That's where he went to high school, yeah. Uh, Coach Polis uh, went to high school at, uh, he told me this too, Pinole Valley. Pinole Valley. So it's interesting where these guys come from. Right. Uh, last week we had coaches from Milpitas, and we had coaches that went to uh, College Park. The College Park coaches almost all went to College Park. Third and five, the ball to 17 at Concord. Inside handoff to Burke, and Burke slips and falls. They're going to credit that tackle to Scott. And I think we might see Mickey Perry, Steve. Yeah, uh, he's been on the side warming up his leg. I've been watching him. And, uh, Perry's a senior. Oh, we were just informed by Dave Jackson that Burke does not have 111 yards rushing. He has 111 yards of total offense. Offense, huh? And here's the timeout. Coach Silvera out on the field to talk to the Bulldogs. The water brigade going out on the field to uh, to give those dogs some water, Steve. Well, when dogs, you know, when they play hard and they, uh, they get thirsty. They get thirsty. Oh, well, I just thought I'd ask. And there's our little bulldog. I think, well, I think uh, Matt Bolander stole that from Fresno State. I think he did. And or the Minutemen might have been, or Georgia, or and the Minutemen uh, might have been Boston College, or aren't they the Minutemen? Or they are the or Minutemen. The Eagles, or Boston, no, Boston College. College, Boston University, or someone like that. So, next week it's the Cougars and the Falcons. The Cougars and the Falcons. And then the week after that it's the Wolverines and the Panthers. And then the Pirates and Here the Spartans. Here I am with the Wolverine <laughs> in the Valley, and he might be a Panther, so you got to be real careful. <laughs> Watch out for his things. What are you on? I swear. You, uh, you can never turn your back on a Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> it just kicked in, folks. 33-yard attempt for Perry. It's blocked. And that is blocked. And really, picks it up. And really is still running. And really has got a first down. Very close. He picked it up. I think he did. Yes, he did. Oh, that's one of the more amazing plays I've seen. Now, how can you draw that up? What a great coach. <laughs> huh, Dan? Now Watch the, this. Now the coach goes, go in there and fake an extra a field goal here. We're going to kick it. Let him block it. Really, then you pick really it up. Really pick it up and run around for a first down. <laughs> and break four tackles. Watch this. That Dave Severa, what a coach. Well, look at Deitch has him, and he runs on with Deitch. Deitch is just, would you stop? Okay, yeah, you yeah. Get back here. He goes, where's your wallet at? I know it's in there somewhere. <laughs> It really now has 33 yards on two carries. What and, a great, uh, what a great effort! You're right, Dan. Man, that that was a weird play though, and that just kind of sums the whole game up for Concord. They yep. have had uh, penalties on, have taken away first downs. They've had turnovers. They've had a block punt or actually a fumbled snap, and now they they block a field goal attempt, and then the, the other team picks it up, and gets a first down. Not. Uh, not what you want to see out there uh, as Burke gets uh, closer to the end zone once again. And I have to say, Steve, I think if Alhambra scores here, this one is just about done. What's his last name, Jacob, number 64? Marlar. Marlar. Marlar and Davidson on the left-hand side. I thought that said Malar. I wanted to make sure your handwriting. I wanted to make Mar sure. Marlar. Marlar. I didn't yeah. want his mom or dad mad at me. Okay. All right. I, not that I've met him, but. His dad's big. <laughs> Second and six. And there's a penalty, I think. Too much time, Steve. So let's uh, let's take a look at next week uh, once again, Camp Lindo at College Park. Tomorrow, though, we're going to be out at Stockton as we take a look at our schedule. Steve, there's some. Oh, here we got to get the call. Start offense, second down. Thanks, Wes. Tomorrow, next week, Campo and College Park. Tomorrow night, we're going to tape the De La Salle Modern Day game for those of you that are just joining us after watching Cops on Fox. And we're going to have it for you as uh, after this play, we're going to show you the spiffy graphics so you'll know what time to tune in because we're going to have a double header for you on Sunday. So you can watch football all day long. You can watch the Raiders, you can watch the Niners, you can watch De La Salle, and then this game. And then CC Rock. This is Burke. Burke on his way. Oh, and Burke, you know, Burke just, he has no touchdown. touchdown. Al Hammer, he has no regard for his body. No, he really doesn't. He just flings it in there. A seven yard touchdown run. Sean Burke and Alhambra leads 27 0. Let's watch this, Dan. And right here, he gets it. He's got a full head of steam right there. And he comes on in. And right here, he's going to join the circus right here. Does a right <laughs> here. Unbelievable. Do they what do that in the circus? They do that in the circus. Oh, it's I thought maybe. Cartwheels. Oh, they do cartwheels. I haven't been to the circus in a while. You belong in the circus. Oh, thank you. Jesus. <laughs> Great run by him, though. Actually, a lot of people would say, I'm in it. I've trained you. 
You always got to come <laughs> back with something, don't you? Well, yeah. You can't let me ever get you. <laughs> no. My God. Perry, <laughs> once again, they just the screen doesn't work for Perry. That one is out on the uh, that beautiful little uh, island out there past the, uh, the driveway. Cars are coming in, and footballs are flying over them, Steve. Well, you know, Dan, I'm going to sit home next week and just think of down wall put downs. Oh, I'm gonna come okay, in, okay, okay, okay. I'll be ready. Well, for here's you. a here's a Sean Burke touchdown. Yes, it is. Unbelievable! What a running back. He's shown a lot. Tonight. 122 yards for Burke. That may be total. Off I offense. think it is. I think he's rushed for 106. Okay. And he has the 16-yard touchdown. Well, run. he does so have three TDs. We know that much. We have. He has three touchdowns. So by far the offensive star of the game yes. tonight. Yes, for the sir. Alhambra Bulldogs, who lead 28 to nothing tonight on AT&T Broadband's Game of the Week. As we mentioned, next week, College Park and Camp Alindo. And tomorrow we'll be taping the De La Salle game. Actually, we'll be taping the game as you watch this. If you're watching this game right now on Saturday night, we're in Stockton. That's right. And we'll be taping that game, and it'll be on Sunday at 3 in the East uh, Central County, 4 in East County. So just turn on AT&T Broadband after the Niner game okay. as they beat the Rams. And our big thing is we just want to make it home from Stockton. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we're not worried about getting there. Coming home may be uh, quite the adventure. Though. That is Perry's fourth kick into the end zone, Dave Jackson says. Can you believe the stats he comes up with? There he is. Yeah, somewhere in there is Burke. Just look for a guy with three touchdowns. That's his line. That was Concepcion, one of the center. That's uh, He's opened some holes tonight. Well, I told you I talked to Severo before the game, and he was really like Perry's leg. And uh, the first couple times, he kind of sputtered out of the gates, but uh, he's really show, been able to show his leg off. Uh, one of the better kickers we've seen in a while. Yeah, uh, as we mentioned, in high school football, the uh, kicker is, has a lost art. Oh, yeah, we have a new quarterback, McNabb. It's Kyle McNabb warming up. He might see some action here. Here's Concord back with the ball down 28, third quarter, and a pass that time intended for... Stephen Rawls, and it's uh, and it could be Stephen Rawls. I want to be politically correct, but it's spelled Stephen. I'm going with Steve. Well, this is America, and the political correct is done with, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's over. <laughs> it's over with. It. it don't matter no yeah, more. Yeah, Stephen, Stephen, don't matter. It don't matter. Mr. Rawls. That's right. And not Lou. It's a natural thing. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, I told you about my lunch yesterday. That's yeah, right. You yeah, you did. Yeah, it's Mario Salado. Yes. He was telling me some good stories, telling me some good. I snuck out of the uh, ho hotel uh, stories, you know, <laughs> like uh, the Raider, only the Raiders could come up with. Second down. John Belici, number 68, checked in the middle for Alhambra, his first action for the night. Here's a pitch to Scott, and Scott is corralled, corralled by a dog, Steve. I've seen dogs corralled, but. Well, yeah, we don't want to get into that, right. but, you know. Chinocchio's Livestock Ranch, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> few people on that side of the hill. I was totally innocent. <laughs> Sanchez had nothing to do with <laughs> nothing that car. To do with that. Uh -uh. Had nothing to do with that barn burning down. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. There's a look at uh, Coach Silvera. When I first saw uh, Coach Silvera, we spelled his name wrong. It's uh, R-A, R-I-A, not R-I-R-A. That would be Coach Dave Silvera. <laughs> Silvera. <laughs> You're right, It's man. Coach Silvera. Third down for Concord. Play action, Bogert to pass, deep in the pocket, throws, and this one is nowhere near the intended receiver, Brandon Scholes, and uh, Concord will be forced to kick once again, Steve, as Alhambra is just relentless on defense. Well, they, uh, they really are, Dan, and uh, as you can see, uh, that wing T when you got to play catch-up is not a great offense to play catch-up with because you're going to eat the clock up and you're not going to, you know, a lot of times you get stuffed for a three-yard run or maybe a four-yard run, and if you don't, really have the offense where you're breaking off 12 or 14 yard runs to move the chains it's a real tough offense to play catch up with so uh, they got their hands full for the rest of the game Deitch to punt Aldridge and it looks like Martinez is uh, back to return this punt those two guys as Alhambra I think they called timeout again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten here yeah, comes number 11 yeah, 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 they it's it's automatic Steve <laughs> the quarterback calls timeout late it usually means the clock's going to run out. You call time out there. It usually means There's our not schedule, Dan. You know, in De La Salle at Pittsburgh, now that's going to be an interesting game, Steve, because I talked to Coach Bill Cockrum of Pittsburgh earlier in this year, and they were pointing to that game. And yeah. then, of course, they went to Buchanan and lost by one, and then they lost to Logan. They, they made it up, though, last week, I think. I don't know if you saw some of the stats in that game. No. 67 to nothing. They oh, outgained yeah. Oakland 490 to 5. Yeah. Oakland had five yeah. yards of total offense. 
Well, you know, Dan, a lot of people point to De La Salle, but when it's all over, De La Salle points to the highway to them. <laughs> yeah, there's the oh, road. There's the road. <laughs> Get you, out. <laughs> you found us. We found you, and that's the way you go. <laughs> <laughs> Every year people say that. Oh, they're down. No, they're down. Yeah. They're down. Yeah, they're down all right. They're down in Stockton getting right. ready for win number 115. That's like a 357 with one bullet left, but it's pointed <laughs> at your head. <laughs> Dice the kick, and that is kicked towards the sideline. Al Hammer's going to come out of this with great field position. That was only about, Steve, about a 15-yard punt when all is said and done. The ball yeah. marked at the 32-yard line. By the way, if you want to tell us what, what do you think of our games here on AT&T Broadband, um, I know that my mom has called a number of times and thanked the staff for getting me off the street and, and your wife as well. Oh, yeah. The game of the week, of course, tell us what you think. Wait a minute, you said my wife off the street? Is no, no, I said your wife is happy that I got <laughs> okay. you off the street. Okay, fine. I, wa I wanted to clarify or, or out that. of her living room. Thank you, Daniel. 6264, 933-6264. Give us a call. Tell us what you think. And uh, we're going we're gonna to be here all throughout the year, football. Basketball, baseball, pro wrestling, tube radio, anything you want, we'll bring you. Marbles. Have the sponsors for you after this. What is it with marbles? You're Burke the Run. What is it with marbles? We're going to show uh, marbles. Oh, we're going to show marbles. Yeah, we are. Burke the Run there a couple of yards. Here's the sponsors tonight once again. Uh, Rock Bottom Records, some big releases next week. I know, I know, Steve, a band that you probably have never heard of. But Queensryche, a big Never double, heard of it. double live album coming out next week. Rick will have it in stock on Tuesday. New Mecca Cafe, Images of Three Hair Salon, SNS Import Service, Golf and Games in Antioch, Concord Beverage, Pantel's Music Box, a and Creative Trophies, Mercado's Hairstylist for Men, and Action Video. You now I've heard of the burritos at New Mecca. Well, I can't believe you've never heard of Queensryche. Queen who? Not Queen, Queensryche. Oh my. Hall, oh, he's got a wide open. Oh, man, did Fielder get hit. That was Bogert, and he's taken out his frustrations there yeah, on a very he really clean is. hit. Nice hit. You know, if it hadn't been, Fielder dropped a wide open pass in the first half. That time, he, he had uh, reason to drop the pass. Yeah, yeah, I think he would have dropped that one too. Uh, think, he, yeah. He really got hit. He got timed good by Bogert. He was in the backfield, uh, the defensive uh, uh, backfield, and he played that real well. And uh, like you said, I think he let out a little frustration, Dan. Well, you know, they. Uh, they had a couple of drop passes in the first quarter, or this would probably be a much higher score than, than, it, than yeah. it is now. It's 28 to nothing, Alhambra with 4.52 to go third quarter. And it's third and nine from the 31-yard line, and this is Hall with two backs. And Hall waits again with absolutely no pressure, but he overshoots Giffen. And you know what? I think they're going to give Mickey Perry a chance here, Steve, at a 50-yard field goal. Why not? Why not? <laughs> I know, you know, I see Perry. He wants to go in and he kick a 50 Let me kick it. Let me, let me have that shot, Coach. He said, well, maybe they'll block it. We'll pick up another first down. But you know what, Steve Conkert, as, as we mentioned, had fallen on, fallen on hard times. They were 4-6 and six last year. Uh, Coach Polis has his work cut out for him, but he's got some talented players on that, that side he, of the ball. He really does, and he knew going into the season, uh, Coach Polis said this was going to be a rebuilding season, and uh, he's got some young guys on that uh, uh, on the offense. And, uh, he, of course, Bogart's a, a quarterback. He's a senior, but uh, there's a lot of uh, juniors in that offense, Dan. Fourth down, haul to pass, and this time Fielder's wide open. He gets hammered again, though, down to the ground by Bogart, but it's a first down. Alhambra and Hall is just having a, a game Steve he is just although I will say one thing about him he's a great quarterback he's got a great arm but if you could put some pressure on him I have a feeling you could really uh, put some pressure on him and 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 really tie him up because I don't think he's as mobile as as guys like Lewis that we saw no. last week in Lynch so no, he's really a pocket passer and uh, if you when we've seen earlier in the game you're right Dan that when he got flushed out a little bit he's not that accurate on the run but you give him time to throw it there and he'll put it on the numbers he does remind you, mind you, a lot of like a, G a Jim Druckenmiller or uh -huh. those kind of guys that were, they had time, they were fine. Here's Burke, and th that was one of the, uh, Burke's few attempts that is going to meet with a, a negative response. 66, Cooper, as you can see the replay here, Steve, made the tackle. And right here, Dan, is it Cooper, number 66? Yes. Yeah, he just manhandles him, gets him in there, and just throws him back for about a two-yard loss. Real good job by Cooper. 3.55 to go here in the third quarter. You can see here's our graphic for uh, De La Salle Modern Day. We're going to tape it tomorrow, there 3 p.m. Sunday in the Central County, 4 p.m. in East County. The Spartans go for victory number 115 in a row. And how can they not be ranked number one? I, we're going to discuss that okay. tomorrow night, but it's unbelievable. <laughs> I we knew that we might even going. discuss it tonight. <laughs> I knew that here's Burke going. on an inside handoff around left end, chased by number 24, Scott. 
and a couple of yards, maybe three, as he goes out of bounds uh, near the 15-yard line. No, here, Steve. Marco Ramos, Marco Ramos, number seven, also helps out on this, Dan. Scott and Ramos, here's a pitch to the left side, and um, he's picking up some yards, and here comes Scott, and here comes Ramos down low and kind of finishes it off. But uh, what were you saying, Dan? Well, I was just saying, you've won 115 games in a row. How can anyone be rated above you when you've won three national championships? I don't either. Oh, that was yeah. That, that, that was, was you laying on your your mute button, Steve. Oh, I'm <laughs> mute. Anyway. I should be mute. <laughs> play action. Hall once again, throwing for. Oh, that was a nice defensive play that time by Joel Krupa in front of Yamamoto, incomplete. So it'll be another fourth down situation. I'm just saying, how in the world you won the championship last year? You're still unbeaten. You beat Buchanan and so Long Beach Poly's number one. How in the heck can that be? You know them Southern Especially California when they're going to play. So. Yeah. How, how could you not say, well, they're going to be number one until Polly can beat them if they beat them in two weeks? Mm -hmm. But it's just, it just cracks me up. They're number one in student sports. They're number one in Cal High sports. They're number one in, I believe, I believe one other publication. But they're not number one in USA Today, which a lot of people hold as, like, the Bible. Yeah. Here's Perry, a 32-yarder. And this He is, got it up. Oh, that's a nice kick. And it's good. Yes. And that time he hit the screen, Steve. Yeah, he really did a good job right there. He's got a good leg. Yeah, Perry is a good kicker. And Perry's a senior, so he's uh, kicking here in his last season. But it's 31 to nothing, a 32-yard field goal from Alhambra's Mickey Perry. And Alhambra just running away with this one, Steve. And Concord has had the opportunities tonight, and they just haven't been able to cash in. No, they really haven't, Dan. And uh, uh, like I said, that wing tee is a real tough offense to play catch up with. But uh, that's what they do, and that's what they run. And uh, uh, they'll stay with it to see what they can muster up. Maybe they can kill the clock a little bit here and uh, make it a little bit respectable and try to get in the end zone a couple times. They won't give up, Concord. Well, next week, Concord uh, looking for their first win, obviously, uh, unless they score 32 points in uh, the next 15 minutes, will be at Mount Diablo to play Northgate, and this Alhambra team will be at Dublin. And there's a, a parry after that beautiful 31-yard field goal, a, a squib kick taken by Scott, and Scott has yardage out near the 30-yard line. And then a, a pack of dogs. Pack of dogs. In on the tackle. There's a, there's a couple of new guys in there. Well, Giffen's in there on special teams. I see Zach Hughes coming off the field on special teams. Justin Turner out there, and uh, John Downey. So there's a, try to get some new names out there There you there go, for Dan. You. Good job, bud. 31 to nothing, Steve. Well, after the first two weeks of the great games we had, we should expect this. You know what I mean? We, we should expect it, you know, kind we, of a blowout. Kind of a blowout. I mean, not that uh, no disrespect to Concord, and uh, we didn't know it was going to be this score, but uh, that's just us. That's, that's <laughs> the way we go. <laughs> yeah. We had two great games, and uh, now we're going to be talking about uh, yeah. who knows what, uh, Who knows, yeah. Get ready in the fourth quarter. Set your VCRs. Krupa, four yards up the middle uh, uh, off that pitch. Now they're going to show a replay right here, Dan, and right here he's just, uh, they're still running the wing tee, and uh, right here he cuts back in, and uh, number 25 for the Hammer Bow Dolls, Mickey Lane. He used to play bass for the faces, small faces. That was Ronnie Lane. Oh, was oh, it? Oh, for crazy. Oh. <laughs> if they put you on Jeopardy, you'd, you'd have, they'd give you <laughs> minus just to start. <laughs> Second and six, a minute 57 to go. Well, you know, Bogert must be a tough guy because he likes to get out there and block. As Scott he does. gets near a first down, out to the 40, almost 41-yard line. Well, we've seen uh, uh, we we seen him hit Burke a while back on defense, so you know he's not no. Uh, and look at the hair on that guy, would you, Dan? What there is he is that? Again. There he is again. That looks like David Bowie in his Ziggy Stardust period. Look at the hair on that boy. I know that's one of our cameramen's son, but uh, does that that's does that Tra give him the right to dip his kid's head in red dye? <laughs> that's Travis's son. It's like he turned him over and dipped him in the bathtub. It was red dye. First and ten, the ball now marked at the 42. Inside misdirection handoff back to Onagisi. There's a fumble. He fumbles. The ball's on the ground. Oh, look at this, Steve. Giffen picks it up at the 36-yard line. Touchdown, Alhambra. Oh, oh he he, then he fumbles. And then he recovers it anyway. Yeah. They got to make it interesting. Oh, Jeez. man. Fumbles on the three. This is when it really gets sad, though, Steve, because Concord was playing tough, weren't they making were. that many mistakes, just a couple, and now they make a big one. Let's watch the replay right here, Dan. It's just like a little misdirection on the inside, and uh, right here he's going for that extra yards, and right there it slips out. And it looked like uh, Nick Davidson forced yep. the fumble, and here's Giffen. 
and he picks it up and goes all the way. But he, he actually loses the ball at about the two. There's Martinez. Martinez is, where did he come from? I don't know. What, Roger, what's he, what was that? I think he thought he was closer. But it didn't matter because he had a pack of dogs leading him into the end Yeah, zone. he did. There's Dan Giffen. He got something in his eye. He goes, I just go to TD. Where's all the girls? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that dance tonight? Where's that dance tonight? I'll be there early. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be leaving late. <laughs> Good job, buddy. There he is, giving, a, giving the, the camera a wave. He's got some nice teeth. You well, I tell you, there's some good-looking kids on that side. There really is. Not that Conquer Juggly. Well, no, but, but they're, we, they're we on, the on the other, other side. side. We can't yeah, even exactly. get our cameras over there, for Christ's sake. And Perry kicks out one to uh, San Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> it's bouncing <laughs> off the high, off the Highway <laughs> 4 up there. 38 to nothing with a minute nine to go. And, and Steve, uh, like I said, Concord was hanging tough, still playing tough. They were moving the ball there on that drive. And then they, uh, the turnover and the touchdown, and things are just not going Concord's way tonight. No, it really did. It hasn't been, Dan. And whenever there's a, we always have our rule of thumb when there's a 30 point gap, we tell everybody to put their children to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Early, some stories some might be stories coming in the be fourth coming quarter. Up, folks, in the fourth quarter, we don't know what we're going to talk no. about. No, because we, we don't want to cut up on on the, the on participants. No, so we we'll, really don't. We're going to uh, cut up on some of our old friends. From here on in, everything don't count. Yeah, uh, some old acquaintances. Ron yeah. Carter's name or Matt Bolander's name might come up once or twice. By the way, coming up here in just a second, uh, if you're looking for uh, Metal Matt on uh, CC Rock. He's going to be on right after this game on uh, Saturday and Sunday nights. And there he is. And, Steve, do you know who that is right there in that picture? Right here. Do you know who that is? That looks, let me look, that looks like Alan Brown, who used to play guitar for uh, with Jeff Chadwick. And uh, I don't know who That's it is, Dan. Rudolph Schenker of the Scorpions. Is it really? How come it says Great White? <sighs> well, that's who. Oh, jeez. Perry to kick. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and he kicks it into the end zone again. And, he, and it's fumbled into the end zone by number seven, Marco Ramos, and now to the 20. Steve, that was Michael Shanker. Let's see that picture once again. I mean, Rudolph Shanker. Let's put this I up again. I, I don't, That's there he Rudolph is. Shanker of the Scorpions. It's Alan His Brown. brother is Michael Shanker, who's in UFO. You've heard of UFO, right? right? Okay. And this week's show is the Bone Bash 2 with Great White. He looks constipated. He looks constipated right there, Ed. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yes, that's, and that's one of our great spon sponsors, Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria, along with Brendan Theaters, so Contra great, Costa Clean great Water pizza. Program, and Paramount Technology. Well, minute six to go, third quarter. We're back to live action. This is Concord with the ball at their 20-yard line. Hand, uh, no, that's play action. Uh, they handed it off. Bogart out in the flat. Pass that time intended for Franks, and it falls incomplete. The coverage on that play from number 42, Matt Fielder. So Alhambra fully in control of this one, Steve, with a minute to go, and Let's just take a look quickly, Steve. I want to look at here just quickly. 18 yards passing for Bogart, two of eight. Scott has 37 yards rushing and a group of 26. But, uh, you know, you go now look at uh, Hall has 94 yards passing and Burke 111 yards rushing. So it's the Zach Hall and Sean Burke show tonight for, uh, for Alhambra. And then Giffen with that big, uh, that big run on the fumble recovery for the touchdown. 38 nothing Alhambra. This is Ramos in the game, a new back for Concord. I'm sure we're going to have to pull out the rosters here in the fourth quarter, Steve, as the clock runs with 53. And they, they actually call, oh, there's a penalty. And it's uh, in the area of holding. They're calling them for a clip, Dan. Oh, it's in the area of clipping. You know there's a basketball team called the Clippers. How come there's not a football team called the Clippers? Wouldn't that be a good name for a football team? It would be. Yeah, Conquer's just making too many mistakes here, Steve. They've uh, had some penalties take a few plays away. On the offense, for we'll repeat second down. I think if I was a ref right there, I'd kind of look up at the moon yeah, and go, yeah. you know, I don't know <laughs> if, if I've seen that or not. If that, if that guy's not laying on the ground yeah. with an with a, with a you know, injury. I'm these are kids out here, and, you know, it, well, I don't think nobody in the crowd even seen it, but I'm still going to throw a flag. <laughs> and maybe it could have led to an injury, though. So okay. 
Here's Bogert with play action rolling. He's got a receiver wide open. Here's the pass. And once again, great coverage that time from Stephen Ayers in the game. The intended receiver rolls. And, Steve, he was wide open. That's about the third time Bogert's shown a pretty decent little arm. Yeah, he really and put it right where he should. And Ayers made a great, great, good play on it. 27 seconds to go here, and there's Rawls going back in. There's been a couple. In the JV game, their JV's finally got a long pass in at the end. I think they lost that game 38-14. to 14. And, Dan, I think what we have here is a, uh, a new pack of dogs in on the game. Oh, it looks we're like we're going to get they, a new pack? I think we're going to get a new pack. I'm looking at the line right now. we got new numbers that are in. Looks like Baca's out. And, uh, it's Bracca. Bracca. Hall's out. I'm out. <laughs> Out of your mind. <laughs> 27 seconds to go. Here's Bogert to pass. Oh, he's he gonna, triple fakes. Yeah, <laughs> triple pumps. He, he has more time than Hall. You know, Steve. I. You know, it's really. I feel sorry for Concord because these guys are trying hard. Oh, sure they're they playing are. hard, and they're just missing stuff by an inch, the, by yeah, a that's foot. That's right. And that comes from all with experience, Dan. And that shows you the youth on their team. And uh, you know they. Uh, you know, you look at 38 to nothing, and they haven't played that bad. You know what I mean? I mean, they've they they, they made a few mistakes that kind of hurt them, and uh, a couple turnovers that kind of hurt them. But uh, in between that, they haven't played really that bad as a score indicates. Yeah, 38 nothing means you have a hard time finding the bus. Fine, that's right. You, you know? know, so it's 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 kind of misleading that score because they've been playing hard, and they've been tackling and opening up holes, and they just haven't been getting it done. Uh, you know, consistently on offense. So it's kind of hurt him a little bit. Here's Deitch to punt, and Ayers is back to And once again, I don't know what Deitch is seeing and why he's kicking the ball to the near to our sideline. That's out of bounds at the 32-yard line, Steve, about a 22-yard kick. And Alhambra, with 12 seconds to go in the third quarter, is sending in a new pack of dogs, as you mentioned, led by Kyle McNabb coming out at, at quarterback. Steve McNabb, 6'2", 170, a junior, obviously the quarterback of the future. The parent heir. <laughs> I like that. A-I-R. That's right. Right, because he's going to use air. the air, right? Because that's uh, that's the way they like to do Dan, things. Dan, I just there. throw them to you, and, and you I just knock them out, out of the, of the ballpark. Yard. That's right. I wonder if there's been any knocked out of the ballpark down at Qualcomm tonight. Misdirection handoff inside to Rilly, and Rilly gets about four, and that'll be the last play of the third quarter. So, Man, Steve, 17 points for Alhambra in the third quarter on top of 21 in the first half. It's 38 to nothing, and we'll see you after this one-minute break here on AT&T Broadband. Tonight's AT&T Broadband Game of the Week is made possible in part by a generous donation from Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria in Walnut Creek. Located in the Encina Grande Shopping Center, Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria has classic Italian pastas and gourmet pizzas in a family atmosphere. And Brendan Theaters Concord, featuring 14 screens of movie magic. All theaters have Lucasfilm THX digital sound systems, stadium-style seating with high-back, comfortable love-seat chairs. Hey, what are you doing? Stop that right now! I'm just dumping my oil in the garbage can. By dumping used oil in the garbage, you might as well be dumping it in the ground. No! Recycle your used oil by curbing the crude. It's so simple. Place your used oil in a sealed jug on the sidewalk along with other recycled items. Call your waste management company for more details or check out our website at www.funnelhead.com. It is undoubtedly Dave Jackson in the suit. Mr. Funnelhead. <laughs> Uh, it looks like Burke's night's over with 111 yards rushing and total offense 127. Hall with 100 yards passing. Virtually the same exact stats as last week. As you see, Alhambra had 38 to nothing here tonight at uh, Knowles Field in Martinez. Dan and Steve and Ron and Matt and our whole crew. We got Dave, we got Brent, we got James in the truck, and we got all of our wonderful cameramen, including the guy whose kid has the red hair. Let's take a look at the scoring here now. We have... Aldridge, a 15-yard run. Burke, a 6-yard run. Burke, a 16-yard pass. Burke, a 7-yard run. This Burke guy's pretty darn good. He's, he's a real good player, and uh, he's proven it tonight. Perry, a 33-yard field goal, and then the fumble recovery by Giffen, 38 nothing. Let's take a look at our remaining schedule here on AT&T Broadband. Next week, Campolindo at College Park. Uh, once again, a traditional offense against a very untraditional uh, option type of uh, offense from College Park in two weeks, Deer Valley at Antioch. We'll talk a little bit more about that here as we go. First play of the fourth quarter and a penalty, and this could be a very long fourth quarter, Steve Sanchez. 
<laughs> you wake up. Oh, I'm sorry. Will we start the fourth quarter? Yes. Oh, okay. Because we're going to have ball. a bunch of. Oh, here's the call. Ball start offense, second down. This guy's good with the mic, too. He knows just when to turn it on and turn it off. He's very good, Dan. Yes, Wes Asmussen. I'm telling you, he's from the SEC down there in Auburn. <laughs> he's getting on a plane right after this game and heading down there for a big showdown tomorrow night. So here's the first play of the fourth quarter, and it's a pitch to Aldrich, who's in there for Burke. And Aldrich speed. showing good speed. Well, he already has one touchdown tonight. Tackled by Scholes. But Alhambra, Steve, uh, after that big loss two weeks ago at Palma, on track now with two consecutive victories. But you'd have to say, legitimately, they've beaten the two teams that were picked to finish ninth and tenth in this league. Not Miramani, right. not Los Lomas, not Campolindo, not College Park. So let's see what they do in the, in the coming weeks. It's going to be third and eight here. That last uh, play they ran behind John Downey and uh, Ricky Jawakam. Jawakam. <laughs> Thanks for it's helping like out, I said, Well, I'll tell you, I had one good on. Uh, McNabb's in trouble. Oh, yeah. That's a good defensive play there. And a penalty. I think, late. I think it's going to be grounding. Yeah. That was Cabral. But I, I mentioned, if you want to learn how to pronounce his name, Jawakam, it's like yeah. what when Bonds is up, what do you do? Jawakam. There you go. Mm. You're good at those. <laughs> You got well. You got Steve. I have four rosters and four four sets of starters. Let's look at this. I'm trying to learn four teams for two nights in a row. You got to come up with something. To but try you to know what? You'll do it. Dan. I'll try. You will. I was up till midnight Wednesday night. You'll do it. We have grounding on the offense. Loss of down. Fourth down. God, Wes is good. I hope we have him for all of our games. Here's the replay. Yeah, back in the pocket. Feel the pressure. He's rising up. Way back. Way back. Tell it goodbye. 22 right here. What are you, you, what are you trying to do Lon Simmons doing football? What was Did that? I sound like Lon? No, but you were trying to do Lon Simmons doing football. How'd you football? know it was Lon then if I didn't? Because he's like the one who says tell it goodbye. Oh. Okay. Fourth and 25, Steve, or fourth in the softball fields down on the harbor. <laughs> and you've played down yes, there a I lot. Have. I, With they, Sammy Papetti, a, a great, and John Costanza, who was the quarterback of the Alhambra Bulldogs in the 80s. I used to watch you play down there. They had bars in front of me. I'd look to them. <laughs> Walls out there hit. <laughs> Here's a handoff inside to 45 Rainford. And Rainford's going to get a lot of that yardage back, but not quite enough for a first down. So Concord's going to get the ball with 10-19 to go here in the fourth quarter. Alhambra had 38 to nothing, Steve Sanchez. Here's a replay of that run. A good little, uh, see that little fake and come L back, a little misdirection little again. misdirection comes around the uh, left side of Alhambra Bulldogs right there. There's a nice clean-out block by, oh, number, let me get his number. I want to, that was a great block. 76. Well, that was... Well, no, that's Conker. That's Conker. 76. Well, if it was Joachim, if it's 76. Joachim, uh, he threw a great block. Your buddy, your buddy Joachim. Don't listen to Run. <laughs> Here we go, Conker with the ball. 9.50, clock running. Down by 38. And a fumble on that snap. As we have a new quarterback in the game, Manny Chavez, or Manny Chavez. Chavez. Me remember, Bill, the remember Bill Chavez? Oh, God. <laughs> he can't be related to him, for Christ's oh. sake. They kicked him out of Antioch. He's in Rio Vista. <laughs> they won't even let him over the uh, bridge. No the more. Hawk, I used to call him. So it's Manny Chavez at quarterback. It's weird how, like, some guys will say that Chavez. Cesar Chavez, and he mm -hmm. spelled it the same way. So, but I'm going to say well, it's Chavez. It's like Magana and Magana. Who knows? Same thing. Here's Pins a pitch. That's Ramos. Ramos just gets drilled by Rainford. And by the way, Steve, while well, we have an opportunity, let's send some uh, good wishes out to Ryan Ellis from Los Lomas High School. He was injured last week in our game and, uh, and has a concussion. He's out for the year. We're going to take it right here, Dan, and here's the pitch right here. Um, Ramos goes to the outside and gets swapped. <laughs> By 52. Oh, also, Zach Hughes, Zach Hughes in that play. But anyway, talk about Ellis a little, Steve. Well, Dan, we want to, uh, you know, he had a concussion and he was taken out of the game, and uh, um, it was really a lot. It was really scary. They didn't think it was that bad. He went to the hospital. He had bleeding of the brain. And I'll let you take this play, Dan. I'll get back to it. Third and seven, inside handoff to number 41, a new player. That's Terry Ferguson. And Ferguson thrown down for a loss by number 27, Nick Percy. 
So go ahead, Steve. Real nice play by Percy. But anyway, uh, it was real serious. His his uh, season and perhaps his career is done with. Uh, it was real scary for a while. And his uh, mom, Sharon Price, said, you know, he's in good spirits. And uh, the school's been helping him. But uh, there's no more football, no snowboarding, no longboarding, no nothing. He, he, he can't even run can't even run for three months he wow. said so, and, well, uh, and also the thing that was interesting about this story is it happened to one of his friends as well yeah there it was, was another second, kid that had it was the second time it yeah. happened uh, he had a he had a uh, head he on injury ted bornstein ted bornstein with ted and uh but this was the second one he's had and it was real serious and we want to send our best wishes now deitch gets off a great punt that time but we want to send our best wishes to Ryan Ellis and his mom, uh, Sharon uh, Price, and hope that everything's okay for Ryan. Maybe, Ryan, when we're over there on October 19th, you can come up and visit us in the booth, and, and we'll even can. let you take over for we'll Steve Sanchez. We'll let you Sanchez take over, Ryan. We're, you're going to be our guest speaker. <laughs> and uh, October 19th. October 19th. Uh, mark your calendar, buddy, because we'll have you up in the booth with us. Al Hamber to take over 747 to go. Let's. i got to tell you some of the great things coming your way. We've mentioned the games coming up in the next couple weeks. De La Salle at Pittsburgh, October 12th. October 19th, Akalanis at Los Lomas. Now, did that you is say that right? Homecoming. Coming, ah, Kalanis. Okay, very you good. You have to remember it's like, ah, Kalanis. Okay. Oh. That's what Clay Callum Kalanis. Uh, that's homecoming and the 50th anniversary of Los Lomas High School wow. that night. So a lot of uh, pomp and circumstance. We have a... Uh, we have an injury. That's Ryan Kane being helped off the field from by Alhambra by the uh, training staff. I don't know if Matt Bolander, what he just said, is true. They're expecting 14,000 people for that game. I don't know. I'll tell you, some of these games we're doing, it's getting scary. It they really actually is. think that we have some sort of importance out here or something, Steve Sanchez. That's a new running back in the game, Steve, and I'm going to have to wait till he gets up to tell you who it is. It might have been Aaron Green. <laughs> I think it was Aaron Green. 23,000? 23, for what? Hold on a minute. Dave Jackson has something. Terry Ferguson was in on that last tackle, Dan. He helped oh, out. Oh, no, no. Ro Dave Jackson's on another game, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get to that. Th we're talking about the Akalanis homecoming game. They're expecting 14,000. For Stockton, it, it, now Matt thinks it's more like 4,000. In Stockton tomorrow night, we could have 20,000 because yes, they had 23,000 two years ago. So now we've all decided that we know our attendance figures. And there's a hold. That was Aldridge, and Aldridge has showed that he has some uh, potential, Steve, as a, as a running back oh, here. Oh, he really does. He's really quick. We seen him in uh, the first quarter, um, and uh, he showed some speed back in the first quarter. And uh, he's quick, he's fast, and uh, he does a real good job. He's, 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 you can tell the Hammer Bulldogs are well coached. Holding, offense, repeat second down. Wes is like the Ramones of referees, short and to the point. Now, where's Steve Camus? He's on the side? Steve is over there on the far side. Can okay. we get a shot of the far referee over by there, number guys? Two. Right by the, the, the down marker, number two, with his hat off over there. Can we see? There he is. He just put his hat on. That's Steve Kamitz, the legendary one out of Pittsburgh, who played in one of the greatest Antioch Pittsburgh games. And of course, we'll have that game for you on November right. 10th. He, uh, him and Steve Leroy, a 40 to 32 battle at Eels Field in Antioch. What a game. And he's in the Pittsburgh Hall of Fame. Yes, he is. You're in the San Quentin Hall of Fame, aren't you? I'm in the Hall of Shame. <laughs> it's a couple blocks down. <laughs> That's Steve Kamitz. He just there spit he at us. <laughs> he did. did he? Yeah. He said, there's Sanchez and Wall up there. I'm going to spit at him. He's got a mustache and glasses. What the hell's happened to him? Well, you got glasses. And I don't got a mustache. Well, it's because you have a razor. Hey, wait a minute. My first name's Steve, too. <laughs> There's some kind of connection. Just the limits, <laughs> the similarities between you two. It's incredible. The only thing I can do as good as him is hit a law ball in the trees. After Me and him played on one team together. We murdered them one year. Third together. and 14 for Alhambra, trying to uh, get something going with the second team offense, ahead by 38. And here's McNabb to pass, play action rolling. And he throws one. That was like over the head of number 85, Nate Camberg, and in front of number 24, Stephen Ayers. So fourth down. Steve, um, one thing I learned about w that we the, the officials kind of got on us last week about getting on the officials, but I learned that when Antioch isn't playing, we don't care much about the officials. No, we really don't. <laughs> <laughs> this game has been superbly officiated by, it really by all parties. And last week's game was superbly officiated, but that first game, Antioch and Monta Vista, <laughs> just, wow. just horrible. But I, I think we learned our lesson that we care a little bit more about Antioch than we, we let on because we both went to school. Flags flying everywhere. And now that was Perry, the punter. 
And I don't mean on the streets of uh, the USA anymore. <laughs> I mean right here on this field. They are well, they're flying fl everywhere. They're flying on the streets of the USA, too. Oh, yes, they are. We got our flag up here. We got our flag. That's right. Displaying it proudly. It'll be another five yards. Another five yards tacked Dead on. Ball. Guy next to him driving me nuts. On the <laughs> offense, fourth down. There's Wes. Wes tonight, as we mentioned, joined by Steve Kamitz, Bill Brown, and Dave Seamus here at Nosefield in Martinez. Alhambra High School, our first and only visit this year as Perry's back to kick with 5.25 to go. And Perry nice gets off boot. a nice kick. And that's Krupa at around the 49-yard line. And he's tackled and manhandled by Zach Hughes over their far sideline. Concord will take over. Steve, this is some of their best field possession of the night. It really is, Dan. And uh, let's see if they can't run that uh, wing tee and run it in for six. Let's uh, see what they can do with this possession. But I think they're changing a lot of their personnel, both sides of the teams right now. So it's hard to, uh, to see their numbers from this vantage point. So we'll do our best. But uh, I like to see them get in the end zone. Well, they've, they've fought hard, Steve. But they have. Uh, it's, uh, it's going to take a couple of years. And it's a, a hard thing to get a new coach after 12 years to come and install this new offense and expect them to just run it with the precisionist the way Ignacio does, who's been running it for a number of years. That's number 11, Jose Rivera in the game. Nice little game on the left-hand side. And they get a first down, down inside the 40, down near the 34-yard line. It's clock stop with five minutes to go, Steve. So we're going to start wrapping this one up with information for you. Uh, as we mentioned, next week we're at DVC, so be, uh, please join us. And Larry Kennedy pulled on that play and made a good play. And Larry Cooper, both Larrys were in on that play. N Mo and Curly were nowhere, just Larry. <laughs> I knew you. I knew you would. You're you're real good about catching that one. Like two guys are named Larry, and that so you think that that play was called called Larry. Larry, Larry left. Larry left. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a pitch to the other side to Ramos, and Ramos makes a nice cutback against the grain, and then he's pursued and hit by Keith Futak. Don't say that wrong. Futak, 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 Futak. <laughs> I didn't say to say it fast. I said don't say it oh. wrong. Here it is. Dan, you want to take this? No, you go ahead. Okay, there's a pitch to the right, left side, right side. Here comes 27, does a good job turning it in, but he turns against the grain, and here comes Futek. Watch this. <laughs> Adam Lacoste was also over there for Alhambra, as well as number 15, Ray Faulkner. We're just going to throw names out right now, Steve. Anyone near the ball gets, gets called. Second and five and a, and a penalty. Adam Lacoste was in on it, too. Was that Lacoste? I, I said that. Did you? Yeah. You're way ahead of me. That's why you're the main guy. <laughs> I'm only here for the beer. <laughs> we haven't been too bad in the fourth quarter, Steve. Usually uh, this is where we get all of our, uh, our joke uh, lines for the next year. Yeah. Offense, second down. Oh. <coughs> Ryan Kane just replaced Ryan Kane. <laughs> 68 went in and came right out. <laughs> oh, things are going to look interesting. You know, these are Cal's uniforms, Steve, at Alhambra Where's Ryan here. Kane go? We got his. Uh, Where's Ryan? What who team does he play for? There he is. He's up here, Steve. Number 78. He's 6'4, 270. Okay. Mr. Kane. And here's the pitch to another new back in the game, number 25, Scott Taylor. And Scott gets about four. Steven Ayers again on the tackle. 3.30 to go here. Alhambra has pretty much dominated this game from the beginning. It was 6 nothing in the first quarter, 21 to nothing at halftime, 38 nothing at the end of three, and we still stand here at 38 nothing in the fourth quarter. There's a look at the scoreboard here at Alhambra High School. As I mentioned, Steve, our only visit this year. And, you know, Dan, I'm proud of ourselves. We haven't got two out of hand in the fourth quarter. No. It's 38 nothing, and, you know, we've done our best. It's kind of hard to call these games uh, when it gets like this, but I think we got uh, 303 to go. And well, we don't have too it. many uh, people. We're going to tell you about the sponsors after this play, but we don't have too many commercials to break up the yeah. monotony either. That's right. There's a fake pitch and a, a roll by the, the quarterback, Chavez, or Chavez, and he gets hammered. Lacoste and Brock there. Anyway, Steve, our great sponsors uh, after the replay. Okay, here's the replay right here. He tries to turn it up. Here comes Lacoste. And boom, yes, and then he gets hit from the backside, and... That was Brock. Here's our great sponsors, Rock Bottom Records, New Mecca, Cafe in Pittsburgh, Images of Three Hair Salon, S&S Import Service, Golf and Games, Concord Beverage, Pantels Music Box, a &B Creative Trophies, Mercados, Hairstylist for Men in Action Video, along with Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria, Brendan Theaters, the Contra Costa Clean Water Program, and Dave Jackson as Mr. Funnelhead, and Paramount Technology. 
2.14 to go, clock running. And here's a pitch and a fumble, the ball on the ground. That's Taylor, and Taylor is, now Steve, that's a pack of dogs. That is a pack of dogs, and they weren't very happy. Led Mickey. by number 27, Percy. That was, that was Nick Percy. And also again in there, Lacoste. So the second team defense doing the job for Alhambra with 2.05 to go. They're going to take over. And, Steve, I don't know if Concord has been near even within the 30-yard line tonight. No, especially in the second half, Dan. They've really, uh, you know, they kind of ran into a wall, and uh, their offense kind of let them down a little bit, Dan. And, like, I hate beating a, a drum to death, but uh, the wing tee's tough offense to play catch-up with. It really is. Yeah, you, you can only uh, do, go four or five yards so many times without uh, – you need a 75-yard touchdown. Here's another new name for us, Steve. Number 28, Aaron Green in the Aaron game. Green. He gets the run and gets a carry at two. Sandoval in there on the tackle. There's still some guys in there from the uh, starters for Concord. So Coach Polis, uh, our first time talking to him. He was very gracious with his time. We hope he feels better. I know it's going to be hard after this game to feel better, but uh, Coach, things are on the up and up for that program. They're going to they're gonna be better. They've got That's a right. lot of youth on this team. Scott's a junior. Anagisi's a junior. Rawls a junior. Archuleta, Carlos, Lung. A lot of juniors over there, Steve. Skulls, uh, Krupa. All those, those guys all... And they, they all contributed. Yeah, they're they did they a good might, job. Next year, Concord might be a little bit uh, on the rise. And here, once again, number 28, Green. And Green bounces ahead and uh, has an Alhambra first down as we're within inside of one minute here. 58 seconds to go, 38 nothing Alhambra. And it's nice when you have juniors like that to get the experience because it don't take much of a motivational speech. Next year you play them like they play Alhambra next year, and he tells them, guys, remember what Alhambra did to us last year? Well, this year it's our turn. Well, if you remember right, Steve, uh, that, that happened to Pittsburgh. They got buried by Ignacio two years ago, and right. then last year they beat him, and that was it. a big upset. So yeah. next week when they play, of course, Ignacio is going to be pointed to that game. This might be the last play of the game, folks, as the clock's running at 30 seconds. McNabb in at quarterback for Alhambra, the second team, and the handoff to Percy, and Percy is corralled by a host, a, what did you say, Dave Jackson? An hour, an, an hour of Minutemen. <laughs> Larry Cooper and Terry Ferguson was in on that, though. Well, 66 that, and 41. That's going to be the last play of tonight's game, uh, game, Steve, as the clock runs inside of 10 seconds. The final score tonight is going to be Alhambra 38 and Concord 0. We'll be back in two minutes to wrap this one up on AT&T Broadband's Game of the Week. Tonight's AT&T Broadband Game of the Week is made possible in part by a generous donation from Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria in Walnut Creek. Located in the Encina Grande Shopping Center, Rocco's Ristorante Pizzeria has classic Italian pastas and gourmet pizzas in a family atmosphere. Locally owned and operated by Rocco Bialy and family, Rocco's was voted the best pizza by readers of the Contra Costa Times. A great place to go to watch the AT&T Broadband Game of the Week. And Brendan Theaters Concord, featuring 14 screens of movie magic. All theaters have Lucasfilm THX digital sound systems, stadium style seating with high back comfortable love seat chairs, and an unobstructed view. Reserve your tickets over the phone and remember, movies always make a great gift. You can even find your favorite movie soundtrack in the lobby of the theater. And Paramount Technology of Concord. Located behind Tower Records in Concord, Paramount Technology has it all. Mobile computer service calls, in-house repair, and a friendly atmosphere. Your computer wizards with expert service and products for today and tomorrow's computer world. Thanks again to Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria of Walnut Creek, Brendan Theaters of Concord and Pittsburgh, and Paramount Technology of Concord for being part of our community and making tonight's production possible. Frankie, what are you doing underneath your car? What do you think I'm doing? I'm changing my oil filter. Come on, let's go. The girls won't wait forever. As soon as I clean this mess up, we can go. Toss that oil and filter in the garbage. We gotta go. Are you crazy? I'm not stupid. If I dump this oil and filter in that garbage can, it will end up polluting the nearby landfill and later the bay. Let's toss it in the garbage over there or in the storm drain. Boy, Chaz, you just don't get it. Whatever goes down the storm drains, goes directly to the river, delta, and the bay, and most importantly, to your precious surf beaches. You're kidding me, right? No, I'm not. 
Do the right thing. Take care of your used motor oil and filter and recycle it. Back at Knowles Field in Martinez in Alhambra High School. Tonight, the final score on AT&T Broadband's high school game of the week. It's Alhambra 38 and Concord nothing. Dan Wall and Steve Sanchez here to wrap things up, Steve. And we're going to take a look, actually, at some of the touchdowns that were scored in tonight's game. And unfortunately for Concord, they were all scored by Alhambra Bulldogs. This is Aldridge in the first quarter. A 15-yard run. And I like Aldridge. He showed some good speed tonight, Steve. He really did. And uh, he's fast. He's like Burke. Here, now, here's Burke answering again. And watch his speed to the outside. He answers with some uh, quick legs and just outruns the defense and walks on in. And here's Burke again. This, I thought, was the play of the game. No, this uh, is the two-point conversion. This is the two-point conversion by Hall. Muscles his way in. So it's 14-0 at this point, Alhambra. Right, right now, after this is the play of the game. Okay, it was the play of the game. It shows the end of it. If you'd have saw the, the first part of that, you yeah. would have saw a great play by Hall to get the ball to Burke. It's 21 to nothing. Now, here's... The handoff to Burke again. This looks like a replay of the second touchdown. It does, but it's not because he cuts inside, and that's and <laughs> right. <laughs> no regard Goes at all airborne. for his body. And then here's the fumble after a field goal by Perry of 33 yards made it 31 to nothing. Here's the fumble, and Giffen picks it up and returns it 36 yards for a touchdown. And uh, you can see it here. And they just knocked it right to him. He couldn't have asked for anything better. Looked like Joe Pasarczyk in the Meadowlands about 22 years he ago. He tries to do a Leon Lett here right at the end, though. He goes, I'm going to score a TD in the Super Bowl. No, I'm not. And, and so it. that wraps up the scoring tonight. 38 nothing. as you take a look at Concord coach Rob Polis addressing his team. And, you know, Steve, he's, he has a long road ahead of him, but I think uh, he's got that program headed at least in the right direction. Oh, yeah, and uh, they're young, and uh, they, they'll bounce back, and they're going to learn the wing tee offense, and they're going to get better as the year goes on. And next year they're going to be stronger, and uh, he's going to stick with it. This is all a learning experience for them, and he's a good head coach, and he's going to stick with his guns, and um, they, they do a good job. They've got I mean, us on the – that's Brent, by the way, who came. What was your line tonight, Brent, about the – a, the dogs. The, a troop of Minutemen. The troop of Minutemen, that's right. A troop of Minutemen. That's Steve Sanchez, by the way, folks. And I'm Dan Wall, of course, and we appreciate you watching the game tonight. We're waiting for Dave Jackson to come up with the final stats. Dave, are we close? Yeah, close yeah. Hold on one second, Matt, before we get to the uh, credits. I'm going to grab the stats real quick. And while he's gone, I'll sing a song, Matt. But it's all in the game. All right, guys, we're going to – Dave Jackson says 10 seconds, and since he drove all the way from Antioch, we can give Dave Jackson 10 seconds. Did he drive Not 10 Antioch? minutes, but 10 seconds. Okay. Before we go, let's just say quickly, next week, Camp Alindo at College Park, 7 o'clock Saturday and Sunday on AT&T Broadband. If you're watching this game on Saturday night, tomorrow in the East County at 4 p.m., in the Central County at 3 p.m., De La Salle and Modern Day. And Dave Jackson, I think, is just about ready with those stats. And it's been 10 seconds, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're going to take a look at it. But we do know that, uh, that uh, Zach Hall had a big game for Alhambra, Steve, and that Sean Burke had over 100 yards of uh, total offense. And what is that hair all about? Well, here's a, here's a, okay, Hall had 94 yards passing. Hey, buddy. Burke had 111 yards rushing for Alhambra. We're going to have to wrap this one up, Steve, and uh, hopefully after the credits, if Dave hands them to me, we'll have enough time. There's Matt Bolander who directed tonight's game. Metal Matt, and don't forget to watch CC Rock on these same Ron channels. Carter. Ronnie Carter on graphics. Fletcher Tyler, a cameraman tonight. Joel Madsen also worked a camera, and he'll be with us tomorrow on Kevin Campbell on camera. And Carlin Larson. Four cameras tonight, Steve. Mm -hmm. Austin Powers, the replay tonight. Yeah, the Last week it was, it was Maxwell Smart. Dave Jackson helped on stats tonight, of Elder course. Jackson 5. And Brent Eldridge, of course, with data tonight, helping us out here in the booth. And we're going to, and special thanks, of course, to Rob Paulus, the head coach of the Concord Minutemen, who was great this week, and Dave Silvera of the Bulldogs. We're going to take quickly a look at the final stats, just team wide. We gave you some of the individual. Alhambra 354 to 161 in total offense. They ran the ball for 200 yards, passed for 94, only 78 yards of total offense. Concord, most of their yards came on penalties. Steve, they only had 96 yards between the running and the passing yeah. tonight. And so, but they quadrupled their passing attack, yeah. four yards to 18 yards. So they passed for 22 yards on the season. A lot of penalties tonight, though, kind of sloppy. 60 yards for Alhambra, 65 for Concord, 13 first downs for Alhambra and six for Concord. As we mentioned, Burke, 111 yards, really had 35 rushing. Hall, nine, seven and 19, 94 yards, one touchdown. And he threw a, a number of those passes in the direction of Giffen. Oh, that's a nice house. That's Hansel and Gretel's. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Yes, it is. I will have to. 
Here we go quickly with our sponsors as we go out with Scott, the leading rusher for Concord. There's Paramount Technology, a great sponsor of AT&T Broadband High School Sports. Ristorante and Pizzeria, that's Rocco's in Walnut Creek. Contra Costa Clean Water Program. And Brendan Theaters, you can see that hardball movie with Keanu Reeves this weekend if you head over there and also Rockstar. And for Steve Sanchez, excuse me, we're going to do our other sponsors. Then for Steve Sanchez, Rock Bottom Records, New Mecca Cafe, Images of Three Hair Salon, S&S Import Service, Golf and Games, Concord Beverage, Pantels Music Box, A&B Creative Trophies, Mercados, Hairstylist for Men, and Action Video. For Steve Sanchez, for Ron Carter, for Matt Bolander, for our crew, and thanks to all of you. This is Dan Wall saying once again our final score, a hammer 38, Concord nothing. This has been a high school sports production brought to you by AT&T Broadband and Walnut Creek in Pittsburgh. See you next week at DVC. Good night, everybody.